Hello, and welcome to episode 84 of the Nerds at Large Gaming Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Darby Hallman. I am Jeff Mayo. And we are joined by two great guests today. Why don't you guys go ahead and introduce yourselves? Hey, my name is Chad. I'm from Respawn Aim Fire, the kick-ass, irreverent gaming podcast. And everything is the same for me as well, except my name is Holden, but I'm also from the Respawn Aim Fire podcast. <laughs> Big change, um, and we got we we got in touch with you guys obviously because you wrote into kind of funny games daily asking for people to podcast with you. So I went and uh, started listening to your guys' podcast and realized that y'all are a lot better at this than uh, we are. So. <laughs> We're just good at so, appearing that way. <laughs> We're so glad we fooled you. <laughs> yeah, it, it definitely worked. So I figured we'd bring you guys on here so you can just show us up on our own show yep. and. Maybe like commandeer other it. guests. Who knows? Next next episode, it might just be Darby and Jeff are dead. Now it's Chad and Holden. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're just going to slowly absorb every podcast. <laughs> <laughs> the ultimate podcast network. But how are you guys? <laughs> how are you guys doing? Oh my god, having such a good day today. So good. I had dr- blood drawn. So how yeah. can you not have a good day when you have blood drawn? <laughs> Yeah, that's you get I cookies. can't think of a better way to spend yeah. my day. Yeah, I did not get a cookie. What, Chad? That, I didn't that was give a bad blood. Day. It you wasn't you like a whole back. pint. I just had it drawn. Mm. Oh, you... okay. Uh, yeah, that's not as fun then. Never mind. No cookies. <laughs> they can't even give the man a cookie. I no did thing. eat a cookie though today, but it was unrelated. Oh, oh okay. Okay, then well, it was you, a good. You earned. You earned that cookie, though. You definitely earned That's it. a great way of thinking at it. What a great day! Yeah, thank you for asking. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to um, get to some house co- uh, housekeeping. First off, kind of funny, which we both kind of has brought us together, has an opportunity that I think is still going on. The yep. kind of funny up-and-comer uh, thing where they're going to fly out some small podcaster to do an entire week of shows with them, and i I personally believe that you should recommend both us and Respawn Aim Fire, as yeah. I have done. Do it. There's um, no limit. <laughs> yeah, just overwhelm them. Like, yeah, it's it's everyone. Times. <laughs> yeah, there are two spots, so like, make them see both of our names so many times. Yes. <laughs> and then we both get in, and the members of both podcasts got to battle each other to see which one get, gets sense there. That's right. An actual battle. <laughs> yeah. Holden already is so stabbable. We're going to be down half of our team. <laughs> yeah, that's how they should make this a battle royale for the podcast. Yeah. There's the people who want to get to this up and coming. But you can go to kindoffunny.com slash up and comer, all spelled out. And uh, definitely, we would appreciate it if you would do that for both of our shows. Not going to lie, I'm amazing. doing it for you right now as we record. That and everyone else so listening nice. should too. Yes. Yeah. I, I agree with Chad. Um, also, there is a Nintendo Direct tomorrow, which the, by the time you're listening to this is today. <laughs> or has already happened. Or, yeah. or has already happened if you're a little bit late. But either way, we are doing our live reactions. That will be at 5 p.m. Eastern time at twitch.tv slash nerds at large gaming. So definitely go watch that. I don't know if you guys know, but we have one video on our YouTube channel that like blew up and it was me and Jeff losing our freaking minds to Joker being announced for Smash. <laughs> like that video has 40,000 views. What? And nothing, el- nothing else on our channel has like anywhere close to that. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> Holy crap. So basically, we're just going to ch- start churning out reactions all the time because yeah. apparently that's the only thing that works. <laughs> <laughs> so definitely go check that out if you want our opinions on that. So we're probably not going to talk too much about that today because we have a jam packed episode. Well, I mean, is. and it's probably going to be done by the time this thing comes out anyway. So what's the point in doing predictions? <laughs> that is also true. <laughs> um, last piece is. I beat Persona 5 since the last uh, taping of this podcast, and me and Jacob recorded a two and a half hour long Persona 5 spoiler cast. Holy crap. crap. And I honestly think it's one of my favorite things that we recorded. We We went in on that game. Are either of you Persona guys? Never played it before. I am a Persona hopeful in that I own Persona 4 and have it downloaded and have had it downloaded for three years, but I've never touched it. Let's take that back. I played... The two hours of Persona 4 Golden on PS Vita, and I always forget that I did because I was reading so much text, and I kept thinking, man, when's the game going to start? 
And someone goes, no, that yeah. this is the game. And I'm like, oh, so this isn't for me. So I just stopped. <laughs> yeah, it, it's real. Like, I, I felt the same way, and I actually got it pretty close after launch in 2017. And I played through about the first palace. So I played like 25 hours, which is nothing <laughs> for Persona. <laughs> and um, yeah, I kind of fell out of it for similar reasons. And it wasn't until this last December. Like it took me until basically 2019. And I picked it back up and I just completely fell in love with it. Even the visual novel aspects of it. It's just, it all started to click. I've so, heard better things about Persona 5 that interest me. This is Persona 4. So I, I'm willing to give Persona Five a chance. It just it the the daunting part about it is it's so long. Like I got excited when I heard Outer Worlds supposed to be a lot shorter than people were expecting. I'm like, oh cool, short game. That sounds great. But like Persona's a hundred hours. That's that's insane. Oh yeah, my final play clock, and it was definitely I left it on idle for a while. But my final play clock was 120 hours. <laughs> Oh man! Yes. Oh man! <laughs> it's that's a commitment for a game. That's that's a that's a game, y'all. It's a game. <laughs> it, that's why I can't recommend it to everyone. And you definitely have to take breaks. But like God, once you get into it, it's just yeah. <laughs> Again, say part of the reason I stopped playing, haven't gone back yet, is there are too many games out now. I might try the Switch version if that happens. <laughs> yeah, which might be hearing yeah, about if in I March. Ever play it, that's where it'll be. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Same here. Well, well, you can go here, like I said, two and a half hours worth of conversation that I hope someone listens to because <laughs> that was a lot. But, <laughs> but um, all right, let's get into what we've been playing outside of that, which I think for most people has been Apex Legends. I mean, me and Indeed. Jeff both j- jumped into it. I jumped into it a little bit more than him. Yeah. I've, have y'all got the chance to play it much? I, I dabbled did. with I it a little round. bit this week, yeah. Nice. Sorry, nice. taking water. Um, yeah, I don't really play. Like, I I've played a little bit of Fortnite, and I'm garbage at it. I'm garbage at um, <laughs> Apex Legends too, to, to be completely clear. Um, but I definitely think that this is a battle royale. I'm a lot more interested in, partially because I'm a I'm a pretty big Overwatch fan, and the whole like character abilities and that whole aspect like that twist on the battle royale is something i can get behind a lot more than the building in Fortnite. yeah i feel, I feel like, like that's, that's what really drew yeah. me into this one this is to be completely transparent literally the first round and only round of any battle royale game i've ever played and i i think it was because we had those extra characters and the unique abilities i think no, that's you what played really Fortnite drew me in. in PUBG no i never played Fortnite. Didn't you? nope didn't you download Fortnite to Switch when it came out on Switch to play it? Oh, yeah. I downloaded it to Switch and iPhone and PS4. Never never loaded it. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> I played... I'm in a similar boat as as um, as um you where I didn't play a lot of Battle Royale games as well. Except, like, one round of Fortnite and, like, one round of PUBG. But, like, Chad, I'm, I'm enjoying it because it the mechanics are really solid in this game. And the world itself is, is fun to kind of explore and navigate around. At least that's kind of what's been appealing to me about it. Yeah, I yeah, I'm also in the same thing. Didn't play that much better rail. Me and already played some rounds of Fortnite when the Switch version came out for a little bit. Mm-hmm. Not really that much. But yeah, I'm enjoying this Apex more too, kinda like you said, the characters and the world is interesting. The mechanics are just really solid. And oh, yeah. kinda like Darby said, the building in Fortnite instantly makes that seem like impossible for me. <laughs> You know, when you see footage of people who know what they're doing in Fortnite, you're like, holy crap, that game is really awesome. But then when you get the controller and you can't do any of that, it's really deterring. <laughs> and you're like, oh, I don't want to actually learn how to do that. Never mind. Absolutely. I've always said I have one victory at Royale in my entire life, and it was literally the week the game launched, and not a single person built anything the entire match. <laughs> <laughs> it was all the new people jumping on. That was the only on. way I was able to win. Yep, <laughs> no one knew what they were doing, and that's the only time I stood a chance. But no, this one, I like. I was really just amazed by how much it looks like a triple A game. I mean, it looks like a like that world is very <laughs> vibrant and kind of fully realized, and the shooting mechanics, just like the kind of first person shooter thing with interesting abilities. Like I always like to play healers, so I jumped in and immediately played that lifeline character. And being able to, you know, everyone kind of has their own unique thing. So you say, tell your friend, hey, use this ultimate and you can call it artillery strike or someone else can like throw down smoke. All those different things, I think, 
makes it really cool, especially since this is a team game, which I mm-hmm. think helps it a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think the team aspect is important for someone like me who is I, I suck at first person shooters, let alone online shooters. So Same. it's n- nice to have a group of people with me that I know actually care about me because they don't want me to die because that'd be a nuisance <laughs> for them. So it's kind of <laughs> nice to have someone on my side while playing. I think that's one big reason why I'm enjoying it a lot. Um, but also I feel like I'm helpful when I'm oblivious and don't realize they got into a firefight and I can save them because I wasn't involved in that firefight. So there's a lot of things that my obliviousness of uh, just shooters in general is, is actually helping me in a way. So they do a good job, I think, of helping newbies. At least I've felt that they've done a good job with getting newbies into the, into the mix on this one, where I feel like a lot of first-person shooters online especially are really bad at that. Yeah, and especially as far as, like, being you like friendly to new people the ping system is just yes. so good yes it's mm-hmm. so so good i mean because i'm someone that like i do not want to talk to random people online oh god even if it would help me it's mm-hmm. like i'm gonna figure out some way like and on overwatch and games like that it really hurts so that's why i pretty much only play with our friends because you need to be able to communicate but this it's just like if enemies start shooting i can just ping and specifically say hey there's enemies over there or i can you can go into your menus and specifically say hey i need this type of ammo it's just oh i almost that's cool yeah almost anything you could think that you would say over voice chat there's a pretty easy way to just click a few buttons and say it in the game which and it's actually so much easier like if you were to say to me hey chad there's a vest over here in the building that looks like it all of those words, I'd be like, what? Where are you? And you can just be like, boop, and it just shows up on my map, and that'd be super yep. easy. Yep, and it'll even, you know, the character that Painted will even say in-game, hey, here's a vest or whatever, to make sh- sure everyone knows, hey, this is where this certain thing is. Yep. It's also just useful, too, when, again, I'm oblivious, and I'm just wandering around doing my own thing, and it's like, oh, my teammates are going this way now. I know that because there's a yellow dot that says they're going this way, because one of them decided to tell me, hey, buddy, don't go over there anymore. Head in this direction instead. <laughs> <laughs> it really helps. Yep, that that happened to me so much in Fortnite, where they're like, "Where's Darby?" Because <laughs> I just <laughs> got lost somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I think that system and that system, I really do think, is going to help this game have some longevity. Because I've seen people who never play games like this, myself included. Like I'll dabble in some of these, but I never really stick around. But I feel like that kind of system makes me feel a lot more like I can just jump in without friends and still not be holding my team back from lack of communication, you know? Mm-hmm. So, and also I think the other element of this that I want to kind of talk about what Apex Legends means releasing, like like coming from EA and the way it was released, because I think it was genius. Oh, it was so good. Because yeah. I was telling Jeff this before, like, I mean, imagine if EA, this is EA, had come out and said, hey, we're not making Titanfall 3, that single-player story you loved, we're not doing that. Instead, we're making it a battle royale game, a free-to-play battle royale game with microtransactions, and it's going to be in the Titanfall universe, but with no Titans. Get excited. <laughs> yeah, I'd be like, yeah, no thanks. There's that no That would have been a way. lame that- E3 presentation. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. That, that game would have been laughed away. Oh, yeah. But, and, and they knew that. So instead, you just make it as quality as you can and you drop it so people don't even have time to complain <laughs> before yeah, they're already playing. You get some streamers to try it out, get to know the game mm-hmm. so they're able to talk about it. And when they stream it, they know what they're doing and show the best qualities of the game. Well, I yep. think the streaming is the big part of it. They were giving, yeah. they were actually just even just tweeted out today. I saw this when I was on Twitter. Um, that they're looking for content creators to partner with. Like, streaming is a big part of their marketing mm-hmm. push. And I think it's and to your point as well of, like, well, they can't show that off at a conference and, and talk about it and say, hey, guys, this is a free-to-play game. But it's really good, we promise. They needed people to try it out. And the streamers, they're using streamers in a way I really haven't seen before. Or I'm maybe just oblivious to it, but I haven't really seen that close of a connection with streamers at launch as opposed to the major outlets. It seems like there's a heavier focus on the streamers. Yeah, I think um, when the, they first released the game, I think all the streamers actually had a banner saying, like, Apex Partner or something like that for the first, yeah. like, day or so. Mm-hmm. And they're looking for more partners. So if you guys are streamers, retweet the tweet they posted out, and they'll hopefully get back to you. 
Uh, I don't think they want us. <laughs> <laughs> well, you we'll show the worst know. part of the game. <laughs> we'll show the worst so, part this is of what game. not to do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, and I think that going towards streamers for this type of game was the perfect thing to do because you just you want to see and to give them early access to it so that right when it released you saw people who were already good at the game yeah they, they had already figured out they had already gone through the learning curves and you were already seeing just all these famous fortnite and overwatch um streamers immediately here showing off this game oh and it and like w- yeah and it worked they have 25 million players now yep, yep. and over Two million is the top concurrent players at a time, which yeah. is also crazy. <laughs> That's yeah, it's just so wild. crazy. It, I it, mean, it really is. <laughs> it went from what was it a uh, million the two million the first day, and then ten million within yeah. the third day, and now twenty five at the end of the week. That's just good for them. Yeah. Good for them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's one of these things. Like if I mean, if you tell me that you're making a battle royale and you're going to release it right now, I'm very hesitant, and I'm like, "So what are what are you doing different?" Because it's like chances are you're not going to stand out. But mm-hmm. I feel like the the way they set this game up to succeed, it was a big ga- gamble. But I think this was really the only way this game takes off this much. Now, yeah. do you guys, where do you guys see Apex, like halfway through this year? Like, do you think that it's still on? anywhere near the pace it is now or do you think it starts to die off some i see this as a legit PUBG replacement because this is launching with so much polish on it which is something that PUBG has never really had um and so and it's also real guns rather than like playing the cartoony world of fortnite so people who are like oh no i play PUBG instead of fortnite because it's more realistic like you kind of get that with apex legends instead so i think that this will be a legit replacement or contender at least for PUBG. and i honestly do think it's going to have legs especially if they release like additional characters or like they're already having like themed events like a valentine's day event this weekend coming up yeah. too they've said they have 10 years of, of they want to support for 10 years is what they've said and so you know they'll, that they'll have, i'm sure they were they were already planning for some of this, but you know that EA is now scrambling to be like, <laughs> put stuff into this game. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, <laughs> I mean, like the day of release, they already did like a roadmap or whatever. Like the first season starts in March and each season they're going to release like a new legend, at least skins, mm-hmm. new weapons and all that kind of stuff. So they're already planning ahead, which will definitely help the longevity of this game. Yeah, I think Chad's totally right that it's going to take over PUBG. The one thing I've been hearing from everyone who likes this game so much is... PUBG, what they liked about PUBG was it was more realistic, mm-hmm. and that's why they didn't like Fortnite. And I think this totally Apex Legends totally fills in that niche. I'm more curious though if it's also going to take over for things like Call of Duty Blackout, because one of the big things about Call of Duty is it's extremely polished. So is this. This is incredibly polished as well. I'm not big into shooters though, so I can't yeah. really say like how much it compares. Um, just because I don't really play the you know shooters that often, but I'd be curious if a free to play game of this caliber could take an audience away from a premium sixty dollar game that also has battle royale modes in it. I think it can hurt, at least hurt it. We'll have to see how much. Like for example, Darby and I wanted to try out Blackout, and we've talked about considering like if they released it separate, just the Blackout mode separate for like thirty bucks or something, potentially getting in. Mm-hmm. But since Apex is now a thing and it's free to play. At least for Darby and I, I'm, mm-hmm. I guess I'm speaking for Darby here. That probably takes away our need for, or want for Blackout. Yeah, I yeah. was gonna say, I'm if I'm Call of Duty, I'm actually. I mean, not that Call, not that Call of Duty should ever be worried about anything because they sell so much. No, they'll be fine. Yeah, yeah. but it, specifically on the battle royale front, I'm more worried if I'm Call of Duty than I am if I'm Epic with Fortnite because I think that, like Jeff said, I think that the Blackout is more of what this is taking the you know what people are getting from blackout and if if you want to get call of duty specifically just for the um battle royale you're paying 60 dollars for that versus exactly. nothing for apex and there's no single player campaign on call of duty anymore they're banking on that being a i mean essentially i mean there's deathmatch and all that still in there but they're really banking on this being a battle royale experience mm-hmm. for 60 bucks with some n- modes are used to as well yeah i wonder if like apex depending how it does will change their plan for it because there's always talk like Will they reboot, um, I guess, like for a better word, the Battle Royale with the upcoming Call of Duty that they're going to release this year? Or what are they going to do? I wonder if this will change anything at all. Well, I think I think Apex Legends is, is in a unique place. I mean, look at how Fortnite has really changed from season to season in a way that 
Call of Duty can't just because they're relying on new games coming out every single year. It doesn't have that same return to the same Call of Duty you've been going back to. Um, it's it's the new Call of Duty for the new year. And I wonder if they'll go for more of a service version of Call of Duty as a result of that. I don't know. The totally just speculation spitball I just thought of right now. Um, but I think... How did Blackout... Uh, no, not Blackout. How did um, Black Ops 4 sell in comparison? Do we know? To the previous uh, years? I, I don't know about that. I know it was second to Red Dead overall, but I mean, I think that was just because Red Dead... We'll get to it later. Red Dead sales were incredible. We, um... We might already know that because Activision's um, quarter three or whatever thing was tonight. That di- that um, sales data might be in there okay. to give us an idea, but haven't looked at that yet. I mean, the press around it seemed to be positive as far as reception and sales. I mean, I, I think it did fine, mm-hmm. but I would be very interested going into next year because kind of like we were saying, I kind of feel like this Battle Royale system doesn't work very well for the yearly release, the that's yearly sixty dollar release. Yeah, that's what yeah. I'm saying is like they they're in between a rock and a hard place where they make so much money on the sixty dollar premium experience they can't just go to a free to play model like Apex Legends and expect it to work. But eventually, Call of Duty is not going to hold the weight that it does now, and it might have to go that route. I don't know. So I'm browsing some Google headlines. Call of Duty Black Ops 4 just broke a bunch of sales records. Call of Duty Black Ops 4 makes over $1 billion in under a month. Already the best-selling game of 2018. I don't think that thing had any hurt in sales this year. Yeah. But the point yeah, is we have to that, see what happens next year, though. Or this year is the point. Yeah. As well. so like, and, and how did, but also the question was, too, is how did it compare to other Call of Duty games? The headline I might be saying, it sold better than anything else in 2018, but it still might not have sold better than the previous Call of Duty game. I'm not saying I'll that's true. World I'm just War saying in we don't... one sales... Total sales up over last year's Call of Duty. Yeah, okay. it, out, it outsold okay. World War II. Okay, okay. That's, why, that's what and, I wanted to know. And honestly, part of this might be... That they're, I mean, Call of Duty is going to stay on this yearly release until it stops working. And right mm-hmm. now, even before, people weren't really playing the campaigns very much. Like People like me. Like, like mm-hmm. whenever I was interested in Call of Duty, it was because of the campaign. But most people were just buying it from the multiplayer. Mm-hmm. So I think even if they do the same thing next year, Call of Duty is going to sell a base amount. It's just ma- – yeah. particularly, I don't know. It, I would be very interested to see if they do Battle Royale again next year and if that performs worse after being in the climate of Apex and Fortnite because Fortnite shows no signs of slowing down. You know, No, it doesn't. But they also have the benefit of not being just a Battle Royale experience. That's why they can get away with being a $60 game, is it's not just that. But as these free-to-play experiences offer more and more, they might have to shift a little bit. But again, they're Call of Duty. They can do whatever the fuck they want for right now. Yeah. Can I curse in here? I'm so sorry. (laughs) Am I allowed to curse in the show? Okay. No, go for it. Okay. Nice. (laughs) (laughs) Fuck. Yeah. As long as it's not the first 30 seconds of the video. Isn't that the thing? Not that we get ad revenue. Uh, about. <laughs> I, I guess we need to act like we might one day. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's a good way of doing it. <laughs> All right, Jeff, are well, you ready to move on? Yep. How about give me a news jingle? Jingle, jingle, jingle. <laughs> <laughs> it's an ongoing thing that the very first week we like had our news segment, and it's like I guess we should have a news jingle. And then he just said jingle, 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 and then the next eighty three now four episodes. <laughs> It's just something that's stuck for some reason. (laughs) Okay. Um, More EA stuff. Yeah, so I read this all, so I just kind of get the highlights. You can just get the highlights of that one. Yeah, this all information comes from Eddie McCook from GameSpot. um, Apparently, EA had a difficult financial quarter. Um, For the quarter that ended December 31st, they had a difficult quarter. Um, CFO Blake Jorgensen said it in preparing for us that 2018 was a... tumultuous year for the gaming industry overall though he did not share any specifics he might have been referring to the way in which the absolute juggernaut Fortnite shook up the industry in the past year not only that but red dead redemption 2's release in october might have impacted sales of ea's games um not much other things but they did put in here battlefield 5 sold 7.3 million copies but was still 1 million shy of what ea expected which now I probably should have done more homework as to what Battlefield normally sells, but seven point three million I, sounded. I, I want to say one was like fifteen million. I might okay. be wrong. Okay, one did feel like a bigger moment. Yeah, I feel this like Battlefield a- Five was just like the, it was a total whimper when it came out. 
Well, it didn't have a yeah, battle just, royale mode as well. I don't think it's it's still not out. I don't believe it's, it's still not out. Yeah. And yeah, since EA now has Apex, I wonder what they're gonna do with that now. <laughs> so, yeah. What else like, did wh- EA release this quarter? Not um, Red Dead. A sports game, or I don't know if those technically these this quarter. Yeah, I don't know when the FIFA other things because it might, might have all have just been before. hinging on Battlefield Five. It, yeah, yeah, that's a yeah. poor bet, man. <laughs> like, it's, <laughs> that's it's, not a that, that it sells like, well. Just it's just not it's not the biggest shooter, not even close. It, I mean, it, yeah, and it, it's usually obviously way more than this. But like you said, Battlefield Five, it was just like no one was talking about that. I don't even really know why exactly. I mean, maybe it's just oversaturation with other things because this Battlefield didn't look that different than other ones to me. It's just no one cared this year. It seems like. And it's part of what makes Apex so interesting is between this and the um, the other Star Wars game that was just canceled. Whatever visceral the whatever visceral's game turned into was canceled. It just seemed like it was bad news after bad news for EA, and then just all of a sudden they have a juggernaut. Yeah, because after yeah. all this news came out, immediately their stocks plummeted. Then Apex comes out, it's received well and everything, and then the stocks just rise up again like overnight. <laughs> and then now with Anthem also coming yeah. out in like next week. I'm Anthem, I'm still I'm very interested to see how that game does just commercially and as far as critically. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I I'll, I enjoyed Apex Legends far more than the demo I did of Anthem. Far more. And I'm not a shooter person, so like it doesn't mean much coming for me, but yeah. that's how I feel at least. I I'm, I'm yeah, a little I, concerned about it, uh, Anthem to be honest. I was not impressed with that demo. Yeah, that kind of. I mean, it seems like people were definitely impressed, but there's some people that, even if it was just because of technical problems, yeah, had a lot of issues with it. So, I mean, Chad and I played together. We didn't. I mean, we had some technical stuff, but like nothing that really ruined the experience. Honestly, if anything, we just kind of laughed at it, and it, that was a highlight. It just. Yeah. It was. It just felt like every enemy was a bullet sponge, to an mm-hmm. obnoxious degree. Granted, we apparently got loot, and then didn't know we got loot. That was new guns, and those new guns were going to help us fight those tougher enemies. But we only played for like half hour you shouldn't be getting guns that make that much of a difference in that short of a period of time fair <laughs> yeah <laughs> maybe yeah, it's a demo maybe that's not representative of the real game but it wasn't yeah wasn't a great demo yeah again i'm interested to see how this does if this meets ea's expectations or you know apex is all that will matter we'll see yeah, i do feel yeah it was interesting because like going into it i was thinking like Wow, there is. It feels like there is just so much riding on Anthem between just Bioware in general mm-hmm. and EA having such a bad quarter and you know bad time recently, and just so much bad press. And then suddenly, like in just a week's time, I feel like we're in a very different landscape because of Apex. I feel mm-hmm. like a lot of pressure is kind of off of Anthem, even business wise. But even without that, um, not this is. Uh, indicative of the entire gaming community, but I was um, IGN posted something about when their Metro Exodus review is coming and when a few of the review barcodes are going to be up for some of the upcoming games like Anthem, Crackdown Three, and they put at the bottom in a poll for what game you're most looking forward to. I chose Metro because that's what I'm looking forward to the most, and I figured, oh, that'll be towards yes. the bottom of the list. That was number one in the list. Um, nice. Forty-seven wow. percent of people said they were most excited for Metro. Thirty-one percent for Anthem. That really, really surprised me. That's Dang. not good. Yeah, that's so that's yeah. <laughs> that's it, three thousand two hundred total votes in IGN.com so far. Man, I mean, it's an enthusiast site, so yeah, not indicative of the whole all people who play video games, but yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, also if you if you just said independently like this is Bioware's new game and it's getting yeah, beat you know, out well, by Darby, you were saying the whole you know there's not a, much pressure on Anthem for EA no Bioware is, there's still that pressure potentially mm-hmm. even more so because of Apex oh yeah absolutely yeah because sure. then Bioware may not be seen as their big money maker mm-hmm. one thing to consider with the stat too is IGN is probably going to get more dedicated gamers who might be more interested in Metro Exodus anyway, when Anthem might kind of just appeal to a broader audience. Mm -hmm. Like more like a Call of Duty audience. Probably know who Anthem what Anthem is and not what Metro is. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. I'm well, speaking of you mentioned the views, Metro's reviews are tomorrow, I think, then Barbara. Yes, tomorrow. Dang, already? Yeah, Yeah. it comes out Friday. Yeah. (laughs) I am like I've definitely kind of fallen into the Metro hype. Just that last like showing when they 
kind of went into the open world and all the different like customizable stuff like none of it necessarily looks that unique compared to other games but it just looks like a polished fun version of like i don't know i mean like a far cry type game but more serious i don't know it just looks fun speaking of far cry that's also coming out friday (laughs) oh yeah yeah but too many games too many games and of course i'm getting potentially the worst too (laughs) <laughs> I'm getting Jump Force and Crackdown. Well, Crackdown because I got Game Pass. <laughs> yeah, it's Game Pass. He's not. I, I wouldn't let him spend six. <laughs> no, I'm gonna try. It out. <laughs> Jump Force. I'm just a manga anime nerd, and we'll see if I regret it or not. <laughs> what if Crackdown Three comes out and is like legit Game of the Year? It's not. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm expecting a solid seven. That's my expectation for it. Yeah. I think yeah, a little part of Microsoft went. Oh, it's coming out along Anthem and Metro and all these. Sweet, it'll get buried, and we won't be embarrassed. <laughs> no, I, I hope that's not the case. Like, unfortunately, but. it just got to the point where like that was all Microsoft had, so they just had to put it on the biggest stage as possible, even though mm-hmm. it had no business being there. Like that was not the type of game that oh, it yeah. was supposed to be. Yeah. yeah, so people are gonna treat it a little more harshly than they probably should. <laughs> Poor so Tom Cruise. Yeah, we, yeah. When. I talk about it. I plan on doing it in two different ways. How good the game is on its own merits and the way Microsoft handled it all. On the positive, <laughs> two different tones. On the positive side, the review embargo for Crackdown 3 is Thursday, the day before it comes out. So they're not trying to tuck the reviews away until the last possible moment at least. Um, the day before it gives bad press some time to spread before people buy it. So that's a good sign at least. Usually they just let it the reviews come out the day it comes out as well yeah. to coincide with launch if, if it were a bad game it's usually the practice mm-hmm. so that's well, a good I, I think what it's since uh, Microsoft has been you know heavy with the jump force um, marketing they know that's also on Thursday because they know it's a better game than Crackdown day, 3 so jump <laughs> so jump force gets all the bad press <laughs> <laughs> but anime nerds like you are still gonna buy it anyway, no so. I think jump yeah. force will be fine I don't it's a, it's just there, a fight. It's basically a fighting game, isn't it? Uh, it's like a 3D arena fighter, which you're kind of you're either into those or you're not, um, for mm-hmm. the most part. But there have been some clips that have been that people got their <laughs> copies today. If you got the ultimate edition, mm-hmm. that show some stuff from cutscenes, and it looks rough. Oh, oh okay. No. Like mo- like one example, I'll just say this real quick. It's a model of like Frieza from Dragon Ball talking to her character and flying away. It's just its fighting stance model, but it just starts floating in the air. It's like, a, it's like they move the JPEG up. Yeah. So, and there's a bunch of stuff like that, so that should be fun. Like those great green screens, people do flips, and it's just like an image of them flipping around, like stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> but hopefully just the combat is your dumb fun that you're wanting, and it doesn't matter what that stuff is, but yeah. we'll see. All right, Jeffrey. Okay, moving on. We're going to keep it on the EA train for one more thing. <laughs> wonder how much of this I should read. If you want to just read his quotes just like there and then out of here. So this is Bob Iger talking at a, um, at a, about EA, EA and their Star Wars deal. Yeah. Um, which part's the thing I can... Just go. Oh. oh. I was looking at the wrong place. Just read that. Okay. Quote from Bob Iger. Um, We're good at making movies and television shows and theme parks and cruise ships and the like. So pretty much everything. We just never managed to demonstrate much skill on on the publishing side of games. Iger said in response to a question about Disney's potential future involvement in video game development. Um, We're good at making cruise ships is just funny to me. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Let's see. And the other quote, another quote from him, we're obviously mindful of the size of the business. Over the years, as you know, we've tried our hand at self-publishing. We've bought companies. We've sold companies. We've bought developers. We've closed developers. And we found over the years that we haven't been particularly good at the self-publishing side. But we've been great at the licensing side, which obviously does require that, doesn't require that much allocation of capital. Since we're allocating capital in other directions we've just decided that the best place for us to be in that space is licensing and not publishing we've had good relationships with some of those we're licensing to notably ea and the relationship on the star wars properties and we're probably going to stay on that side of the say on that side of the business and put our capital elsewhere yeah so this like i don't know how much to make of this like obviously he's probably not going to come out and completely say yeah ea has fucked everything up <laughs> <laughs> it's just not the way he's gonna do this, but I mean, at this at the same time, 
I don't know. It, it, it's a little frustrating for Disney to kind of want to double down on what they're doing with the EA license with Star Wars. I think, like us, and I think you guys said on your podcast and just everyone, I would so much rather see them treat it like they're treating Marvel. Oh, yeah. And, like, seek out developers and kind of let them play around with the Star Wars universe because I think no one can deny that the EA deal has been lackluster. <laughs> what does a, someone have to do to get fired from the Star Wars license? I don't think, <laughs> I've worked at a lot of places where I'm like, damn, it's almost impossible for someone to get fired from this place. And that's what I feel like it is with Disney right now. Like, I think you have to do it, something. You have to kill somebody in order to get fired from <laughs> Disney. I think part of it is that as a business, you need to be respectful to the contracts that you made because that would then look poorly for the next contract to try to sign with the publisher, even though they have the power, maybe just a respective business. I don't know. But it, this phrasing doesn't necessarily say they want to keep going with EA. He just has an aside of saying, oh, notably EA, they've been good. And then, like, comma, back to, we're just going to stay on the licensing side of the business. He doesn't say we're going to stick with EA. He just says we're going to stick with the licensing side of the business. So it could be that behind the scenes, they're not happy with EA. They're just not going to vocalize it out loud because it's not respectful. Yeah, I can kind of see it that way. And I think the good news out of this is that Disney is going to do the whole, yeah, just giving it license out to people. Mm. Because, like he said, they haven't done the best necessarily in doing their own stuff. Yeah, and the one thing that I, I do think that this, like, definitively communicates is that they're probably not looking towards anything like reviving LucasArts, which is something that a lot of people want. I am in the camp that I kind of don't want that because I feel like even if Disney tried to go into video games, it's obviously not their focus. I would much rather them seek out the insomniacs of the world or the you know other developers like that, like they did with Spider Man, and let the people who are best suited for these games make the games rather than just some team that Disney puts together. Like Square Enix with Kingdom Hearts, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> the best Disney game. I mean, it yep. probably is. Is there a better Disney game? I don't know. <laughs> I, mean, they're, they're pro- I, th- I think I remember hearing uh, the Toy Story Spider-Man. 3 game was actually pretty good. <laughs> the Incredibles game on GameCube, not probably mm. great, but nostalgically awesome. In nostalgia, awesome, great game. <laughs> I can't remember if I played that or not. I feel like I did. It was I never played Disney Infinity. To, people seem to like that, even though Bob yeah. just said, "Oh man, we're not good at that." Disney Infinity sucked. <laughs> yeah, they canceled <laughs> that like pretty fast. Around. Actually, that wasn't that fast, actually. But they did. No, it, it was around for a while. It was. Yeah, yeah. it was like the, they did three versions of it. I think actually. I, mm-hmm. I think just the big surprise there is that the, that um, Infinity wasn't doing that bad when they closed them. It seemed mm-hmm. like it was still kind of a big deal, and then it's just like, nope. Oh. <laughs> yeah, but the writing on the wall was there for the Toys to Life in general. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I've seen Nintendo with Amiibos. Yeah, yeah. But that's Those Nintendo. That's Nintendo. Yeah. <laughs> they they can get away. The with The rules that stuff. do not apply for Nintendo. If, nope. if anything, actually, the video game stuff is weirder for Nintendo. They've been a toy company a lot longer. So yeah, since the 1800s, right? <laughs> or yeah, they were at least no, like literally, some trading yeah. guard. Yeah, yeah. Been around yeah. like 120, 130 years now. Yeah, the old. <laughs> they old. <laughs> they old. <laughs> yep. Okay. I guess we'll move on now. But their time code. This is a big one. Big one, Jeff. Yep. Okay. Poten- comes- potentially a big one. We'll, yeah. we'll see. This comes from Tom Phillips from Eurogamer. Microsoft is readying a new level of Xbox Live support for Nintendo Switch, iOS, and Android devices. The Windows Maker teased the reveal due next month at GDC 2019 via the industry event's own conference schedule. Thanks, Windows Central. <laughs> um, the move will see Microsoft integrate Xbox Live achievements, friends, clubs, and game history into non-Xbox and Windows PC platforms for the first time. Um, the Microsoft description reads, um, Xbox Live is about to get much bigger. Xbox Live is expanding from um, yeah, 400M gaming million gaming devices and and a reach to over 68 million active players to over 2 billion devices with the release of our new cross-platform XDK. Um, continuing the quote, get a first look at the SDK to enable game developers to connect players between iOS, Android, and Switch in addition to Xbox and any game in the Microsoft Store on Windows PCs, end quote. You can already sign into your Xbox Live profile on Nintendo Switch and mobile platforms while cer- within certain Microsoft games, the cross-platform Minecraft being the most obvious example. Um, the CPR integration goes way beyond that, though, to tie non-Microsoft games on non-Microsoft platforms to Xbox Live as well. So, for example, if you're playing Warframe on Nintendo Switch, you could earn Xbox achievements. 
Or if you're playing Fortnite on mobile, you could browse your Xbox friends list to find people to play with. So the Nintendo Xbox love affair continues. Yes. <laughs> but yep. Keep it going, at least until Banjos and Smash, and they can quit for all I care. They, they can have a breakup <laughs> after that. <Yeah>. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm very interested to see like what exactly this means. I think the, like, the big flashy headline of this is like, yeah, Xbox on Switch, what? But I, I do think out the gate... This is pretty much going to be kind of what that says. It's going to be you can make you can get achievements by playing some games on your Switch, or you can look at your Xbox Live friends on Switch, which is a big deal. I mean, that's a <laughs> very mm-hmm. big deal and something you probably will never see on a PlayStation. But I am interested, like, if you guys think that's where this ends, or do you think this goes to? I don't something else. We talked about this on our show two days ago, but I've had some more time to think about it. And I think what really is actually going to come out of all of this is developer tools for helping people who don't necessarily have the time to create their own tools for cross-play and cross-progression to just buy into Microsoft's system. I think things like Fortnite, the cross-progression and cross-play work so well because you have an Epic account. And they already have a system in place for all of that kind of like third party wise. It's not linked to PlayStation, not linked to any one device. It's linked to your Epic account. And I think Microsoft is just making tools available now to have Xbox basically be your ex- your Epic account. So whether you're playing on Switch, iOS, PC, or Xbox, all of your information is synced via Microsoft's Xbox Live. So I think that's really what it is to help other developers just have a plug and play tool for implementing cross play without having to worry about building their own system for it. That's actually a super interesting take. I hadn't really thought about yeah. that. It's not as exciting, but it makes a lot of sense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it does make a lot of sense. I mean, the only thing about all of this that's weird to me is that like, I mean, it's bad, but Nintendo has an online system that they're obviously trying to promote i guess and trying to do things with let's see what happens tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> so like I, I, it makes me wonder how much they're gonna let xbox be the thing you're using on there yeah that's my my, that's my question yeah. too there's just no way that my, nintendo would allow you to n- not buy nintendo switch online to buy xbox live instead and I, I think Chad has a point there where, like, it's going to be a really good point with the whole idea of, like, it's going to be built there for cross-progression and things like that to help developers who might not be the size of Activision or EA to, to have some of those tools. In the same way that, like, Apple offers um, APIs for developers to help sync certain information for apps, um, even if that team that's making the app is very small and might not be able to buy their own servers to store that information. I think it's something along those lines there. That also makes sense too, because Microsoft already does those kinds of things with um, with uh, with their cloud tools, which they're one of the biggest companies for um, for any sort of cloud resource right now. Um, it's them, Google, and Amazon, pretty much. But on top of that, I think that the cross plays where it's going to get weird. I don't know how much this is going to deal with cross play. I think it's going to be there for the cross progression, the achievements, that kind of stuff. Because there's a lot of wonkiness when you get into multiplayer and what that means. Do you have to have all the services to play with each other? Um, like if you want to do cross play, do you have to have Xbox Live and Nintendo Switch? I don't know how that would work out. It's probably better if just Microsoft ignores that. And I think they probably will. I think it's mostly for the stats and the account integration. Yeah, I agree. I think the most likely scenario is that that's pretty much what this is, and or at least mm-hmm. what this is for the foreseeable future. Mm-hmm. You know, this this could lay the groundwork for for future things. But I think mm-hmm. for the most part, that's what that's going to be. I mean, obviously, Xbox is very interested in pursuing crossplay in yeah. in certain ways with pretty much everyone at this point. They're doing mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. You can do that with Minecraft and Fortnite for sure with yeah. Switch, and I'm sure there's others. Um, I would have to imagine you would just need the subscription for whatever you're playing on, but yeah, that would make the most sense. But if yeah. if Microsoft and and a lot of these companies want to go for a service model, it, it would make sense to have you have to pay access for Xbox Live, even if you're on a Switch. Yeah. I think he's, biggest, I, I, so I thought about this before too. I think he's, Chad made a Chad made a prediction that, and I think he's totally right, is that Xbox Live is going to include Game Pass and it's going to include other services that Microsoft, xCloud, things like that. It's all going to be bundled into one eventually. And that's going to increase that, hey, you can do uh, Xbox Live, which is really all these other things, 
so you can access Microsoft games on your Switch or something like that. Like maybe the future's there, who knows? But it's going to be service based. I mean, Microsoft has totally confirmed that. That's that's they've been very vocal about the future being service based. To what extent that is, we don't mm-hmm. know. But this could be hopefully not the case where you have to pay per service to access all your friends. I don't like that, but it's I think it's feasible. Yeah. I think that Game Pass is like one of the most interesting angles because, I mean, on our podcast, we've talked all year about how awesome Game Pass is and how much better it keeps getting. Mm-hmm. And if about some later. Xbox does want the future, to, like if Xbox one day wants to just be a service, basically, mm-hmm. I could potentially see a future where you log into Xbox Game Pass on your Switch and you get games. You know, whatever compatible games that go yeah. through there. Yeah. Well, it'll be everything, considering not all of it can run on the Switch, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. But <laughs> Well, if it's, it's cloud-based, we'll though, see. it doesn't matter. Like, they could have Game Pass. Like, Game, Pass could, Game Pass could just be xCloud at some point. They could yeah. just, why not turn both of them into the same service? And this is what's just very interesting to me going forward, because it seems like Xbox does have a box that they're going to want to sell in the next generation, but mm-hmm. then they're also kind of communicating or hinting at wanting a service that you can play on any different device. So it's like, Mm -hmm. I'm wondering how those two things go together. Like, will I have any incentive to go out and actually buy an actual Xbox? And maybe, maybe they don't even care if I do or not, because maybe they'll be making enough money on whatever service they have that Mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. You know, I don't know, but it will be interesting. I'm, I'm, it's a very, like, this could end up being not too much, but I think it could, you know, yeah, I mean, the, the consensus we kind of came up when we were talking about it is most likely it's just going to be the achievements, the stats, and the account stuff syncing across. And and it's funny because the language in the release that uh, – the GDC schedule that had the, the quote you, you mentioned, that entire schedule doesn't mention multiplayer at all. There are some hints at it because they mentioned a service. I can't remember the name of that service was that was linked to multiplayer or connected games. So like that's the only vague hint. I can't remember what it's called. Do you have that quote up? Is there a mention of a service? It was like one word, two uppercase letters. Um, I don't see it on the note. That's fine. Um, yeah, so there's a vague mention there, but a lot of a lot of uh, other news stories seem to be mentioning multiplayer. I don't know why. It's not mentioned once by Microsoft or I think, by the leak. I definitely think this is like the worst storm of it was leaked kind of like it was definitely not meant to be announced and it was just like a little description on a gdc panel Mm -hmm. and then it was taken down and then now the internet has several weeks to just theorize and that's always ends in disappointment oh yeah it's always a bad thing yeah it's always fun yeah all righty okay that's one to look out for PlayFab, that was the service combined with PlayFab gaming services. It's like Play a Fab. Yeah, what it's a like a. Name. It is a terrible name, yeah, but it's just a service. I, to- that- I absolutely thought you said PlayFap with a P. And I, just- <laughs> really? I play that game every night. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a service they have for, um, I guess, using cl- um, connected games over the internet. But that doesn't necessarily mean multiplayer. Right. But it's right. strongly suggested, but it doesn't mean it. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll have to see in March, which that's when GDC Quickly is. Quickly appro- yeah. approaching. <laughs> okay, moving on. This will probably be a quicker thing. Um, got some Mortal Kombat updates. But the saddest news of the podcast, Th- This is true, yes. Um, Cabal and Devorah were announced as playable characters, and they're returning. Um, they also confirmed Shaggy from Scooby-Doo would not be a playable character. <laughs> Rest <laughs> R.I.P. The dream is dead. Yep. <laughs> He seemed like yeah. the most likely option. I'm surprised. I mean, yeah. it's, I mean, it's kind of just real talk, real quick. I don't expect this to happen, but if they really wanted to, they could add Shaggy slash Scooby to the next Injustice. They're like, I like. The, they don't like. Obviously, it wasn't going to be a Mortal Kombat because yeah. they don't want us to decapitate Shaggy. Oh no, as no. much as we want to. <laughs> but even Injustice, I don't think they want us to punt Shaggy and make him bleed either. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's not it's not as the craziest character thing people know because you know they all owned by the same company. The closest there is crossover between Batman the, and Scooby Doo. The absolute closest thing I think you'll see is either Scorpion or Batman wearing a green shirt and red pants. I'll something. take it. <laughs> yeah, but 
Cabal and Devor, Devor was really cool. Are either of y'all Mortal Kombat guys? I'm just not a fighting game person. I'm just really uh, bad at I, them. I will play them occasionally at friend's house. I can never commit to paying $60 for a, a fighting game because I just don't feel like I personally get much out of it, aside from Smash. Oh, I wasted my money getting Smash. Fair, I very fair. It. I mean, Smash is... Smash, we are obsessed with Smash here. So yeah, sorry. We don't have much to say about it. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. It's oh, no you're fine. This is, this is going to be fast. But, I mean, Mortal Kombat is just, like, the one of these that I'll actually buy every one of just because I have a group of friends and none of us are particularly great at it. But it's just dumb, primal fun to watch people's limbs get ripped off and stuff. It's fun. <laughs> yeah. I always have a ton of fun playing it with other people, but I, I like, never play it by myself. Yeah. yeah. Fair, fair. Okay, well, moving on. Um, you guys might have talked about this because this is kind of old at this point, but our last podcast ran long, so we left over here. Um, we got all of Nintendo's financial information from their last um, Woo! thing. So Nintendo sales block. Yep, so we're just going to go over that stuff. See where the conversation takes us. Okay, first thing. Switch has surpassed 32 million units sold, uh, making it... About 14.5 million units this fiscal year, and also along with that, Nintendo have adjusted their forecast from 20 million units for this fiscal year overall to 17 million. So they just barely missed their 20 million goal, which, I mean, we all thought was kind of lofty, but, I mean, they're close, and they're obviously going to get to that 20 million by, like, March or April, I think. Well, it's, March was their no, deadline, that's that's right? the cutoff yeah, for the twenty million. Yeah. yeah. Oh, right, right. Yeah. Sorry, but so April, April, April right. is gonna be close. April, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Which I saw things like their stock was like going down. I'm like, if you're watching this industry at all, you know that the switch is in good shape. Well, which, I mean, you know. and they, I don't have the ex- the overall um, software numbers. They broke records with that and exceeded their expectations by a fair yeah. amount. Yeah, so. totally. Mm-hmm. Nintendo's fine. And it was the best selling console in the US last year. So, yeah. Right. They're, They're doomed. doomed Switch, Switch is the last console Nintendo ever make. It's over. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Nintendo doomed. Is Nintendo doomed? <laughs> Find Boom. out There's tomorrow. your headline right now. Yep. yep. That's the title of the podcast. Uh, title of every podcast already. Um, and yeah, we just got like the top 10 or so um, Switch titles. Yeah, let's just we'll go through them. S- might go through these fast, but we'll see. Mario Kart 8, over 15 million, or at 15 million now. Cr- crazy for a port. <laughs> yup. Yup. A lot of profit, so, that's what that means. <laughs> yeah, so I think I think they counted um, the numbers for the Wii U one together. I think I saw Mario Kart 8 is now the second best-selling racing game of all time behind Mario Kart Wii. <laughs> 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 nice. So... That's not too surprising. Um, next, Super Mario Odyssey, thirteen point seven six million. Yeah. Keep on selling. Yeah. Um, and what's probably the biggest news of all these individual game sales numbers? Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, twelve point zero eight million, making it the best selling yeah. home console game ever in like a month. <laughs> yeah, it's about to outsell Odyssey, and it's been out for like a month. I mean, it has probably... an attach rate of more than like more than one third of all systems have it, and it was out. For maybe three weeks, yeah, three weeks. That yeah, the tiny number is so. But I Nintendo mean, doesn't next, have. Sorry, go ahead. Oh no, I was, I was gonna say maybe next time we hear these numbers, Smash could be the best-selling just Switch game. Yeah, which is unreal. It will be. I just love this story yeah. because how many people went into 2018 saying, "Yeah, but Nintendo doesn't have Mario or Zelda to release. Those are their only best-selling games." Like, no, yeah. <laughs> not even close. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, even. Uh, Darby and I, we expected this mess to sell good, but this probably exceeded most people's expectations. No, it's when crazy. he sent me the thing, it was just like the, a few days later. It's like, oh, it sold five million in like two days. I'm like, oh, jeez. <laughs> people <laughs> love are the bros. Yeah, absolutely. And it just it just seems like everything sells better on the Switch. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, that's, rate that's is the real trend. Yeah. Now, I don't care for Animal Crossing personally, but I am very interested to see how well it sells. <laughs> Jeff, um, Chad, I'm sorry, I've, I've been listening to a lot of y'all's <laughs> podcasts recently, but Chad said that he would rather have a colonoscopy than play 100%. three hours of Animal Crossing. 100%. I, <laughs> no, fair, I mean, I'm not going to play it again. I just want to see how well it sells. I can see if that continues the um, Switch Games Breaking Records thing since the last two broke 11 million. <laughs> Oh my god! Wait, was there one on Wii U? Did it? 
Did it no, have that high of No, okay. no, there was The last one was on the 3DS, but oh, that's right. okay. it, you know, it sold like crazy. So I'm just curious to see how well this one sells. Yeah, well, Again, I'm I don't curious plan to see how it. many colonoscopies they sell, because I think that's going to be better. <laughs> you, like, GameStop will offer colonoscopies. You can either get <laughs> Animal Crossing or colonoscopy. I mean, they don't sell games these days, so. Trade in your they're iPhone. About to, they're about Nintendo to not Switch. sell anything. <laughs> 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 Next game, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, 11.68 million, which I think makes it the best-selling just Zelda game, period, especially when you add in the Wii U sales. Which Zelda oh, always... Right. I always forget Zelda that games in general. Yeah, yeah, most people did. <laughs> I think still sold like a couple million. <laughs> yeah, that definitely added on to it. So Zelda games always... like Zelda sales always make me sad because they always sell less than you thought they did. <laughs> I mean, like the Breath of the Wild always. is the exception to that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Luckily. Uh, next thing, Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee together at $10 million. I, I wish we knew how many people bought Pikachu and how many bought Eevee, because that way I could know who to judge. Every uh, every time okay. I've gone to the eShop, like around the time that like, those games launched, Pikachu is always first. Yeah. Always. Of everything, when Sometimes I... a few spots ahead of Eevee. Yeah, for everything I've seen when they separate them, Pikachu's always higher than Eevee. Yeah. Makes sense. Hell yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Um, okay, next. Splatoon 2, 8.27 million. Splatoon, big. Um, th- and I, I can't remember the number. I think it's a crazy how much of this is just from Japan. Yeah, they it, Japan Splatoon, I think, it. is the best-selling Switch game in Japan, I think. I think it even beat yeah. Mario. Is it really? Like the yeah, best? I think so. Oh, I'm, oh, wow. I'm going to yep. look it up. I'm pretty sure, yeah. Wow. No, I think you're right. Wow. Um, next... Honestly, one of the most surprising numbers on this whole list: Super Mario Party, five point three million. Hell yes, y'all! That game is fun. It's oh, so it fun. It's so yeah. fun. I really hope in the direct tomorrow they announce like DLC boards. But other than that, yeah. <laughs> and I've played it with like my family members who don't play games at all, and they have a blast and want to keep playing it. It's just, it's great. I don't know. It's like. It's the most fun I've had with a Mario Party in a very, very yeah. long time. Yeah, and I've played it with seven-year-olds, and I've played it with 35-year-olds, and it was fun mm-hmm. both ways. Yeah. Nice. I sh- Actually, let me see. Yeah. Won't, won't worry about it. I think I looked it up, and this now is one of the best-selling Mario Party games. <laughs> Sweet. Good. So, and again, it, Mario Party is one of those games that's going to continue just selling as more Switches are sold. P- yeah, people are going to, when they buy Switch, you buy Mario Kart, and you buy... Mario Party, probably. And Smash, and Mario and or Zelda. Yeah, I guess that list yep. is getting too big now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of um, games you have to buy with your Switch. Next game, 1-2 Switch, 2.83 million. What a dumb yeah. game. It makes me sad. <laughs> <Yeah>. makes me <laughs> sad. <laughs> that's, <laughs> really sad. That's 100% because it was a launch game. Yep. Oh, yes. I'm happy I did not get I mean, on that. I was, I mean, no, was there were people who were actually excited for it. I was working at uh, GameStop as a, a holiday seasonal person. Um, the year, the first holiday of Switch. And I distinctly remember this woman coming in and bought a Switch just for 1-2 Switch. Why? It was the only Why? thing she bought it for. Like, did you want to get Breath of the Wild? Did you want to, like, pre-order Mario? No. Honestly, just it was the first holiday. What were they thinking? <laughs> yeah. She was probably the kind of person who only played Wii Sports as well. Probably, probably. yeah. Probably. But Wii Sports probably, was more entertaining she... than 1-2 Switch by a long shot. Absolutely, and it was free. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Maybe exactly. she had empty nester syndrome, and she just wanted to cradle a baby again. <laughs> <laughs> but I've always had the opinion I would be okay with one two switch if it was just included in the switch, no extra price. Yeah, but we were all saying like, no one's gonna buy this. This should be a launch yeah. title. Clearly, we were wrong because they sold almost three million copies yeah. of it. So Nintendo yeah. is just laughing all the way to the yeah. bank. With that. Okay. Next thing, Martinez Aces, two point five three million. Mm. Good for that game. Underrated game. It's really good. I don't game. know. The st- that's, that's the biggest regret I have that I bought on the Switch. The story mode is hot garbage. Like, oh, the so adventure much mode trash. is absolute other shit. Multiplayer but, is really fun. But the multiplayer is fun. But I can also see why you might regret paying $60 for it, assuming yeah. you get that. Yeah, yeah, I, I get that. And, and I might be biased because this is one of the few games I feel like I'm legitimately good at. <laughs> and of course, it, ha- it, ha- it has to be Mario Tennis Aces that no one gives a shit about. But <laughs> <laughs> The one game you're good at, no one wants to play with you. Exactly. <laughs> I, Darby, think how I feel with Dragon Ball Fighters. Come on. Oh, um, God. Yeah. The wrap-up, I 
Yeah, I think this wraps up the top 10 for the Switch sales. Kirby Star Allies, 2.42 million. Which, also game, I guess I'm kind of surprised I saw that much. I'm not sure. Yeah. So, it was on Switch. And, yep. It's all that. I'm interested to see how Yoshi sells in comparison. <laughs> mm. um, and some other sales data from a couple more Switch games. Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze. Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. Sold over just over 2 million copies. Oh, that Captain- should have sold way too many. Or way more. I don't that game disagree. is so good. <laughs> it's on my backlog. I need to play it. Yeah. Um, while Captain Toad and Octopath Traveler has sold over 1 million each, and Octopath Traveler is not including Japan sales because Square Enix handled that release there. Mm. So, yeah. this seemed good for all those games. Yep. Yeah. Um, moving on to some other That's non-game stuff. Online service has over 8 million members. This is not counting free trials, so about... A quarter of Switch users have online. Smash! <laughs> it's all for Smash. Mainly, yeah. That's when we got it. But um, yeah, it Mario Kart Tour is delayed to summer 2019. Okay. Um, Dr. Mario World was announced for mobile and is coming early tw- summer 2019. And it's free to play with in-app purpose purchases. Um, let's just see how that works. Um, Super Mario Bros. movie is scheduled for 2022 now. Everyone excited for that? By the minions, yeah. people. Yeah. Made by the minions, people. <laughs> Get hype. I'm not going <laughs> to think anything until I see a trailer for it. I don't know what to think. It could be great. I mean, it could be really bad. I have no idea. I mean, that's fair. After the Detective Pikachu, who knows anymore? Yeah, that thing. Everyone yeah, thought that, that was going to be trash and a half, and then you saw that trailer, and you're just like enamored with it. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. like, I saw that trailer. I'm not a Pokemon guy at all. Jeff's a huge Pokemon Love guy. Pokemon. And when I, whenever I watched that trailer, I was like, oh, no, everyone's going to hate this. I'm like, the oh, top it's like, this, this, <laughs> like, what are they doing to these Pokemon? It's like, oh, Jeff's going to hate this. I have to go console him. And then I, like, go talk to him, and he's over the world about it. I'm like, okay. Right, now, it's sure. one of those things that watched. It's like, this looks good. Am I crazy? Looked online. It's like, I'm not crazy. <laughs> <laughs> no, that thing looks so good. Yeah, I'm excited. Um, hopefully, it lives up to the hype, current hype. Um, okay, Nintendo said it is preparing at least one unannounced title for Switch in the fiscal year 2019 that fans would be delighted to know. Very vague thing. Half but Life Three. Yep, Half, <laughs> Half Life Three confirmed. That's also interesting coming from the uh, the leaker who says that there's going to be 11 unannounced Switch games released this year, and Nintendo's like, well, we've got one that you'll be delighted to know about. <laughs> yeah. To, to be fair, I, I know which leaker you're talking about. She said like some of those were eShop titles. <laughs> yeah. 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 So. I also said, like, there's a max of 11, but, like, five or six of them will probably be coming out this year, not all of them. But 11 could. She was pretty vague about it. Emily and Rogers one's going to be delightful. Yeah. yeah. She's, she does some hints about it, so. She's usually pretty accurate, though. Well, yeah. I only play delightful games, so. <laughs> <laughs> and, if the, and if some of the... Oh, wait, go ahead. Oh, I, I think it's going to be a 2D Zelda game for Switch. Oh, yeah. Uh, I was about to say, the one of the person who kind of leaked the direct or whatever on her setter put a list of games 2d zelda was on there oh Mario is it Maker 2. sweet uh it may not be in the direct he but just it's, said it's for being those, predicted yeah yeah that he's saying it should be coming this year it Mario makes Maker sense 2. when they announced link um, between worlds they announced it in an early january direct and it came out in end of the year like october i talked to darby earlier today and i think if they announce 2d zelda tomorrow that's like the perfect way to start a direct yeah i think so too absolutely mm. I think it'd be surprising too. Like I think that people like us are expecting it, like know it's gonna be happening, but I don't think it's as like I think more people are focused on like Animal Crossing or Luigi's Mansion or Fire Emblem. Fire Emblem. I think they're more focused on those seeing those games tomorrow. Um mm-hmm. not Metroid Prime Four. <laughs> not not seeing that one. Yeah. Um so I think it'd be a surprise. It'd be nice, it'd be cool. Oh yeah. Hopefully that's it. Something also like that, that Star Fox game. Yeah, I'm so, yeah, so I guess where do you guys land on that? Are you thinking since you know, the R- Retro is just done with whatever and it's probably Star Fox and we're it, just getting that this year? It's tough to know because some Retro developers have come out online and said, hey, so who's working on this Metroid game? Because everyone here is busy with stuff. Does that mean that that Star Fox rumors are real and they're working on it and it's ways off? Or is it they're almost done with it so they can work on Metroid Prime 4 soon? Or did Star Fox get canceled? Like It's, it's kind of uncertain. But I wouldn't be surprised if... Star Fox is being made by Retro, and it's coming out this year because it's been a while since Retro's released a game. The last notable thing they did was Tropical Freeze, I believe, in and 2014? then in, in 2014, yeah, and well, they did the Switch port, the too. port, 
Yeah, but that's not going to take up much time. They have yeah. Well, that's that's not going to take away from doing I don't a Star even Fox know if game. They worked. On yeah, it, really. yeah. Dumb question. Was that even them, or we know that? It Retro was, doing yeah. the the port. Okay. Nintendo usually outsources those ports, I believe. But yeah, I which is why I, it was so like noteworthy that Retro was the one doing the port. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, they did do the port. Yeah. Well, like you said, it's. That didn't take too much work in comparison. Yeah, they it also didn't take make five games, years to do the port. Retro also makes games usually. They have a, at least in the Metroid Prime was was out. They made those games in about two years each, two three years each. Yeah. So they're they're actually pretty fast. But again, that was a different team. It's changed, so we don't. It's yeah. it's hard to know. Well, we might find out tomorrow, and this whole conversation will be irrelevant really quickly. Mm, might be. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's move on. We just got a bunch of sales news because last couple weeks have been crazy. We got some Take Two slash Red Dead stuff. More um, Red Dead has now shipped over twenty three million copies. Crazy. Um, Take Two's revenue grew to one point two billion dollars, up from forty eight million during the same period last fiscal year. That's, that's a jump. <laughs> that's a big jump. Damn. Uh, they, and they said the large contributors were just pretty much every game they released. <laughs> <laughs> the Red Dead's, the GTA's, the, the NBA, NBA 2K's, 2K's, all of those. <laughs> the all Grand Theft Autos. Yeah, and it's kind of crazy because I think Red Dead Lifetime made like 13 or 14 million. Yeah, I think it's like, yeah, that 15. I think it's 15. Yeah. So that's obviously crazy. Crush that, and it's just going to keep on selling. I mean, it's not surprising necessarily, but. I mean, it's still just kind of crazy to think when you when you compare it to we see so many other games. It's like, oh wow, they sold nine million, ten million. Uh, good for them. Red Dead twenty three yeah. million. It's like we just saw Battlefield sold seven, so yeah. this is a lot more than seven. <laughs> yeah. I didn't look. Yeah. At th- I didn't look at the information, but I saw there was a going to be like a big patch where they announced a big patch right for Red Dead Online. So I'm curious. We need to get back about. into Red Dead Online. We, we some. It's just hard to find time with everything. Too many games. Way too many. At least we got our money's worth with the single player. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so let's see. Let's move on. Yeah, which we are. I do hold. I, I suggest that you carry on with Red Dead. <laughs> <laughs> me, me, me and Jeff are like huge. Really like, you know, it kind of seems like everywhere you go, you, it's a 50 50 chance if you're going to find someone who absolutely hates Red Dead or loves it. Mm-hmm. We happen to have two people on this podcast that it was both of our game of the year last year. Yeah. <laughs> and I will say, it's really the first Rockstar game I ever played, so I don't have that Rockstar bias. Yeah, he, he didn't even play the first Red Dead. And I didn't yeah. expect him to play this game at all, but. Yeah, I'm, I was just, I'm really enjoying it. It's just a game I have to play little by little. And. Yeah. I find I'm treating it like a TV show. Like, hey, I'm going to tune in for this episode. And then I'm out. And I, I kind of like that, actually. Um, so I'm keeping it on my PS4. I'm going to keep playing it just little by little. Um, mm-hmm. I did look up. I was actually kind of curious what the sales were for GTA V in a comparable period. The best I could find was their first year sales. And within mm-hmm. one year, GTA V sold 33 million copies. So I think Red Dead's oh, outpacing wow. GTA V. Weird. I figured it'd be The other way higher. around, yeah. Hmm. Interesting. I mean, I think a lot of GTA sales came from once, the um, current gen, con- like when it yeah, got ported. Yeah, once over. online yeah, was yeah. like fully and up and running. Yeah. PC too. PC yeah. too, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I- I'm sure Red is going to be released on PC eventually. Yeah, and it's going to come out for the next gen like, consoles as well, probably too. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. But it's an amazing game. It's not for everyone, but if you're no. into it's not the, for the Chad, vibe that's of for it, sure. yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yep. I, to- I totally get that. Yeah. It's like, yeah, and I, me and Jeff both played it. We were like, we're going to take our time with Red Dead. We're going to really just try to relax and enjoy it. And then we both beat it in a month. A month. <laughs> <laughs> to me, that's that's taking my time with the game is a month. That's impressive. It, when I got Breath of the Wild, is, I put... This fi- is... Oh, when I got Breath of the Wild, I, put, I, call, I, do, I didn't call off work. I planned ahead and actually took those three dogs, <laughs> which is unusual for me, actually. Chad will know that. <laughs> and uh, so I took those three days off of work. I told my boss directly, it's for Breath of the Wild. I hope you know that. <laughs> like, this is nice. what it's for. I put 50 hours in that one weekend. So if I really, like, get obsessed with the game, I, I delve into it. And for some reason, I'm not taking that approach with Red Dead, which is weird considering how much I'm enjoying it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but there is, like, I kind of get what you're, you're talking about, like, tuning into a TV show with Breath of the like. Red Dead is all about the story, and mm-hmm. you are like dealing with. You're kind of having every single time you play. There's some new narrative, some like you said, almost like a new episode of a TV show you're watching. Whereas Breath of the Wild, it's a lot more of, I don't know, your personal exploration through that. And yeah. I know the cutscenes weren't as compelling in Breath of the Wild. That's for sure. 
Um, no, not at all. Like <laughs> I, the, the story, I don't care. Like Breath of the Wild is one of my favorite games of all time. I couldn't care less about. Oh the story. yeah, the story is pointless. <laughs> There's kind of like every time I've gone back to replay the game, I just don't even bother collecting the memories, except the one the, you have to get one, I think, to get a certain upgrade. <laughs> yeah. Other than that, I do not care about those memories at all. And I also hate the champions, they just all annoy me. I'm just like, let me just get three. <laughs> <laughs> they are, they're obviously going to be in Smash. All of them. That'd be really <laughs> funny. The Joker's the first DLC character. The remaining four DLC characters are just the champions. That's it. Oh, my God. <laughs> the Sakurai just, like, flips off the camera and walks away. <laughs> but they still do I, it one at a time. Like, tomorrow they'll announce that it's going to be uh, Revali, and then, like, in three months they'll announce Mifa. <laughs> the, and Revali's going to be out. a Falco clone. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, he basically already looks like... He already is Falco. Exactly He's just Falco he is, with yeah. an attitude. <laughs> Falco already had an attitude. They're both dicks. <laughs> true. Yeah, I guess that's true. Okay, moving on. We got a little Capcom sales information. Um, Monster Hunter World has sold 11.9 million copies, which is 60% more than Capcom's second highest selling game of all time, Resident Evil 5. It's another one of those things, kind of like Zelda, like 11.9 million sounds low for Capcom's best-selling game ever. But And yeah. then the second highest one is in the 7 millions. Yeah, that's crazy to me. In, in Capcom's entire history, and Re- like Resident Evil is such an iconic franchise, and none of them have sold more than 7 million. Yeah. yeah. I hope well, RE2 damn. does better than that, though, because RE- Resident Evil 2 remake, I think, already had like 3 million in its first few days so hopefully it can get momentum yeah because that game is phenomenal i plan on getting to it at some point that's what so. we have another um guy who comes through our podcast very often who jacob hamill and he's very 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 into this resident evil <laughs> to re2 remake I, th- I think this resident evil can break some records i think it has the potential it's getting the word of mouth it's just you know really good and no. i think right now it, there are not many of that who's kind of like single player games so Mm-hmm. A lot of people should get it. So. It was a good time for it. It got yeah. ahead of kind of, you know, the Devil May Cry anthem, all these other games mm-hmm. that are coming out right now. Devil yeah. May Cry is yeah. like a cell game bus too. Um, I hope the, so. The only other Capcom game I have on here is Mega Man 11, which is at 870,000, which seems pretty good to me. I mean, was that a million? It's a lower budget game. Yeah, I feel like world. that's a lot for Mega Man. I don't, feel, I, I don't feel like Mega Man's ever sold a ton. No. No, I think Mega Man's another one of those that it's a very iconic name in gaming for how long it's been around, how innovative it is, but not mm-hmm. necessarily a commercial juggernaut, you know? Yeah. It pulled yeah. in profit, I'm sure. That game did not look like it cost. I'll put it this way. The budget for Monster <laughs> Hunter was clearly a lot higher. And I have to, well, I have to imagine Monster Hunter made its money back in its time. Exactly, yeah. 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 And then with that expansion coming this year, oh boy. <laughs> Which it looks like a substantial expansion. And I mean, they it's have coming that, out almost two years afterwards, so I imagine. And they announced it uh, pretty much a year ahead of time. And they have that Witcher D- uh, DLC that we yeah. have to get to, Jeff. We have to level up uh, enough to get That's going to take forever. <laughs> I know, but, but it's Geralt. <laughs> we got to do it. Okay, next right. thing. This is pretty much just for me. Um, <laughs> Kingdom Hearts League has shipped over 5 million copies worldwide. This makes it the fastest selling game in the franchise. That's like a that. lot in a short amount of time, Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was after just a couple days. I think. <clears throat> I think it's successful, for sure. Okay. It didn't beat out Red Dead Redemption, so it's just not worth mentioning. <laughs> this is, you're right. <laughs> I'm actually just going to cut that out of the podcast. Yeah. yeah. On, like, let's be honest. If a game doesn't sell more than Grand Theft Auto Five, is it worth it? I'm it's not. not. It's not worth it. It's probably a shitty game too. I agree. <laughs> okay. Um, final news. <laughs> I'm sorry. We didn't mean to be mean to Kingdom Hearts. I can't oh, even no, say it's... we like it though because we've never played it before. <laughs> hey, oh, no. hey, I mean to be fair, this last week I've seen a lot of people uh, talk shit about Kingdom Hearts, and it's mostly yeah. deserved. But I, I played Birth by Sleep. I like Birth by Sleep. But we're going to play Kingdom Hearts 1 in March, both Chad and I. Yeah. Nice. Cool. One's the only one I played, and I was a kid. And all I remember is the music being really good. Now, and that's it. I'm sure you guys know this, but um, Kingdom Hearts 1 doesn't age particularly well. Yeah, I've act- to the rest I was of the actually franchise. literally just going to ask you about that. Because we had uh, one guest, Steven, in our podcast, uh, who said, oh, it's a great place to start. And then uh, a good friend of mine, Ellen, she said that 
it's you're gonna have a hard time they changed a lot in kingdom hearts 2 and 2 and 3 have more in common than one of the other games in this in the series yep yeah <laughs> okay do you, do you think you correct. can jump into two and kind of be okay story-wise for for as much as you can be okay story-wise in kingdom hearts uh, i hear the probably. story's a mess anyway so <laughs> maybe yeah it <laughs> is but it's a, in a way a charming mess <laughs> right right it's either you'll love it or hate it this is what i don't understand about jrpgs and having played a handful of them People say the, the stories are so good, but then I'll say the stories are garbled messes. Like, what is it? You got to pick one. You can't have a garbled mess. It's also a great story. There, I, 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 well, it kind of depends which one you're talking about, partly. <laughs> I mean, Jeff is way, like, quantity, way more into, like, a lot more JRPGs than me. I'm a lot more picky. I, I hate yeah. a lot more of them, but the ones I love, <laughs> I love. <laughs> I mean, to give you an example, I love Tokyo Mirage Sessions, so... <laughs> okay. Never I've heard, heard of that. that but I've never That's played. That's the um, F- Fire Emblem Shin Megami Tensei crossover thing. Yep. You fight, ah. but you fight by like dancing and singing and changing There's your. Kind of. It, it, it's a very interesting game. I kind of it's ported the Switch, so it gives a chance to other life. Its gameplay is if you're like, let's say, like Final Fantasy X combat, it does that kind of thing really well. I mean, honestly, after Persona, I'm more interested in the entire world of just Persona and everything yeah. else around it, but. I mean, I think there are a lot of JRPGs that are kind of just, like, junk food. I mean, like, some of the Tales games, I would say, yeah. like, I really like them, I mean, but it's That's just what a like, lot of people say, it's just JRPG junk food. Right, it's, it's like, the characters, you end up, like, loving the characters almost from the sheer amount of time you spend with them, and sometimes the story is, like, whatever, and it can go on. There are exceptions, I would say Persona 5 is, like, the biggest exception to me right now, and I also just beat it, so that's part of it. Mm-hmm. But that's like Persona Five like roped me in with the characters and the story just kind of seemed whatever, and that's how I expected it to be because that's how it is with a lot of JRPGs. But then just as you go on through that game, there are just some times where it's like, oh, you thought you knew what was going on? Nope, and it just subverts expectations enough to where I was very like you know drawn into it. And in Kingdom Hearts, you just never know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. Okay. Last little news story. We're talking er- earlier about that there, Game Pass. Um, last week, yeah, last week, um, Xbox had one of those, I forget the name, Xbox Live Shows or whatever. Uh, Inside Xbox? Inside, X- Inside Xbox. Xbox. Yep. yep, I watched that thing. It was maybe a little long. It was an hour and a half. Yeah, they're all like very how- long. Yeah, I, I, feel, like like I, I, I feel that way about all of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, I like their general structure, but some segments just go on way too long. Like, they talked about the the Halo event thing, which uh, that, was like over 10 minutes long talking about it. I'm like, you don't need to do this and stuff like that. Anyway, there are a lot of some cool stuff in there, but some of the most interesting thing is they announced that some of the Game Pass games, they hinted today they're going to be more for February. Um, the biggest one that's already out on Game Pass is Shadow of the Team Raider, which if you're trying to think if that's the newest Team Raider, it is. <laughs> which wow. may, maybe is not the best sign for that game sales. No. So when did they come it, out? September. Came out in September. September. That's yeah. not, and not that bad. That's, it would have sold its its fair. Well, its I mean, biggest sales period has already passed anyway. Yeah, but it was just in comparison to a lot of the other games Game Pass has been getting. Mm-hmm. Like, this is as far as like being a bigger title, a lot more recent. Okay. Besides, of course, yeah. Microsoft and games. It's honestly more just like the this Tomb Raider reboot trilogy like i really like the games a whole lot i think they have a lot of problems and they don't innovate a whole lot i just think that it's every two years i have a fun uncharted like game but i actually think the tomb raider gameplay is a little better than uncharted even though the story is way worse but they're fun games to me but the first game the 2013 one sold like really well like it's old like i think like 10 million copies or something more than that roughly like Something like that. Something like that. And it's just both of the next games just came out in horrible times and just don't seem to have done much. And it, I don't know. It's just yep. kind of... Uh, two, also, two, 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 two things really quickly. So one, um, Tomb Raider 1, well, Reboot 1, was on mm-hmm. current gen and previous generation consoles. It did the whole right, cross-gen. Correct. Well, so yeah, that, yeah, that it was previous for a while, and then they did the definitive hair edition on PS4 and Xbox <laughs> The hair edition, yes. <laughs> yeah. Also, though, but they've also had a partnership with um, with Microsoft for a while. I'm pretty sure the second game, right, was yeah, it Rise, Rise of the Tomb Raider, it that had a, like an exclusive time thing with Microsoft. So they've had partnerships with Microsoft for... 
for a while. So they that this just might be an extension of that partnership. Maybe it might not be because it didn't meet their sales expectations. I don't know if we know. That. Yeah, it, yeah. It, and, but part of this was also like Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Like I bought the game sixty dollars in September just because I like these games a lot. But mm-hmm. it was literally like a week and a half later, it was half off on yeah. Steam. And then a few weeks after that, it was like half off everywhere. Okay, it okay. just kind of seemed like it was very quickly going. Down yeah, very quickly going on sales. Okay, that makes sense. All right. Yeah. yeah, and to keep it with Square Enix, this isn't on this list, but I don't know if you guys saw Life is Strange Two is also on Game Pass, and Ooh, Episode Two big. just came out. Like Episode One was came on like beginning of January. Episode Two, I think, is coming in a month or so. Like they said, they're all the episodes are coming. It's gonna be a little delay, but they're coming, which. It's kind of, as someone who has Game Pass and got the season pass, all the episodes before for episode come out, kind of stinks some. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. That game is basically still in its beginning stage, and it's already, you know, kind of free for all these subscribers. I, I don't know. Like, maybe it's just Xbox paying money for that. I'm not sure. I'm I not think really it's really also sure. because it's, it didn't meet expectations, because you just heard a lot about it yeah. not selling that well. Yeah. Uh, guess, well, let's get to other Game Pass games real quick. Walking Dead, the complete first season coming out on already on February 7th. Cool. Um, Pump BMX Pro also came out on February 7th. Pumped. Yeah. <laughs> the Blob, February 14th. Heard good things about that game. May check it out. Who knows? Um, Crackdown 3, of course, on February 15th. And Batman Return to Ark on February 21st. Hey, mm. good game. Yeah, this is and plural. That, yeah, that's is- a good... I say, that's a very good list of games for this month. Yeah, Return Super to Arkham is yeah. that some of the Arkham Knight games? Is that one of the Telltale ones? What is that? No, no Return to Arkham is the collection of the first two. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, I didn't know that. Hmm. I, I I thought the same thing, Holden. I thought that was the Telltale one. Yeah, I was really confused. I'm like, you guys like the Telltale Batman game? I didn't even know you played that shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I do have, have that on my PS4, ready to play. <laughs> and you've touched it many times, I'm sure. I've touched my PS4. <laughs> that's a <what's> smart. <laughs> I'm interested to see they add Arkham Knight at some point soon, so they just had the whole, all of them on there, or at least the trilogy part at Origins at some point, I guess. Alrighty, well, it is time for our podcast game, which we is a very infrequent se- segment on our show that we do every now and then when we uh, think of something to do. Um, and this time, in the spirit of kind of funny, I have prepared a mobile game or bullshit. Ooh, for okay. Us to play, and I hope it's. W- Good. <laughs> um, I'm actually going to go grab a pen. So, Jeff, can you vamp for a second? Never mind. Hey, Jeff had a pen right here. How about Jeff? Right on time codes down, Darby. How about Jeff? Good vamp, man. Good vamp. Yeah, that was a very <laughs> useful vamp for me. All right, Jeff, do not look over here because I do not want you to see the answers. So okay. Though. Okay. Because Valentine's Day is this week, I have oh, themed no. this around Valentine's Day. Oh. The best thing. Um, and if you don't know what mobile gamer bullshit is, I have nine items on here. And this is something I'm ripping this straight from kind of funny. Um, and RIP Jerry Petty. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> RIP. Um, I'm going to list off different things. And these are either going to be mobile games or romance movies. Ooh. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> and you guys have to guess. Which one it is? You did this because partly because I, you know, I don't know these, and I just really had to hope that Holden or Chad aren't like gigantic romance movies aficionados. Oh man, I love John Grisham. <laughs> <laughs> John Grisham? You mean Nathan Sparks or Nicholas Sparks? Nicholas Sparks. John Grisham. Nicholas Sparks. Yeah, that's they're John both Grisham. very similar. <laughs> James Cameron. Grisham. That's a romance guy, right? <laughs> John Grisham is the same kind of thing. It's the one that my mom reads all the time on the toilet. But that's he's like, nice. is not a. I thought it was like um, a, that, wasn't that like a lawyer, like detective stuff? Isn't that John Grisham? He doesn't do romance romance novels. I don't does know. He? It doesn't matter. It doesn't okay. matter. My mom Maybe reads it on the toilet. Kuntz. Kuntz. I think he's the Dean Kuntz. Oh, that's Dean he's Dean a Kuntz, good yeah. like scary yeah. writer. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, let's get started. Um, I just have here writ, writ like I have. I'm gonna write everyone's answers. I have Jeff, Chad, Holden. So I guess we'll go in that order. Okay. Cool. Just because that's what I have on the paper. <laughs> All right. Number one, love is a game. Ooh. Uh, I'm gonna Jeff? get a movie. All right. Um, I'm gonna say movie. Okay. Holden. Everyone said movie. I want to say game because I feel like this might be a trick. 
secret. They're all tricks. Yeah, you don't you don't know you don't know what I'm what I'm doing. I, I know what'll happen. I feel like Love is a game. It doesn't make as much sense of it being a game. Maybe I don't know, it makes more sense of a movie. Unless mm. it's super self aware. It's a super yeah, aware game. Yeah, Could it's be. a mobile game. Know. It could be anything. No, True. <clears throat> number two, love, money, rock and roll. Uh, I'll go game. Oh, that's that's straight up a movie. It has to be a movie. Yeah, I was thinking the same Probably. thing. It has to be a movie. <laughs> <laughs> it just the major is rock apostrophe in apostrophe roll. <laughs> yep, <Yes>. movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Number three, the love witch. What? <laughs> the love witch. <laughs> not like not like sandwich. I'd say that it's like the <laughs> space love space witch. <laughs> the love witch. <laughs> I really wish it was the love witch though. Like, I, I wish it was people with peanut butter and jelly between them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, man, this is one of those that could easily go either. It's, it's one of those that could be both. Are there anything to get both? No. Oh, there are no both. Okay. Okay. Um, I'll go a movie on this one. What was it uh, one more time? The love witch. The love witch. Okay. The Love Witch is a mobile game. Okay. Holden? I just can't imagine a movie so bad it'd be called The Love Witch, but I can't picture I can. a mobile game that bad. So, yeah, we're going to go with mobile game. <laughs> All right. Number four, Cupid Inc. Mm. Mm. Um, I'm going to go with mobile game. Does dating app count as a mobile game? <laughs> <laughs> well, none of these are dating apps. All of these okay. are. Did you leave okay, out okay. OK in front of Cupid there? <laughs> <laughs> I did. It is simply Cupid Inc. Cupid Inc. Uh, that is a movie. Yeah, I'm okay. saying movie as well with that one. All right. have the, have From the creators of Monster Inc. brings you. Cupid. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm feeling bad because I think the last three they both gone the opposite of me. <laughs> yes, <yeah. laughs> no, no. <laughs> this is either really good or really bad. Yeah, either really good or really bad. Number five, Academy Romance Seven. <laughs> what? <laughs> this is. I don't even know okay. what that means. <laughs> this is probably some dumb Japanese visual novel thing. I'm going with mobile game. Okay. Oh, that's if a this great is a movie, point. It's absolutely it is, a mobile game. You're right. If this is a movie, it's a porn series, or at least softcore. <laughs> or like, I did not go that deep into it. These are from like Wikipedia <laughs> searches, so I don't really know much about these movies and mobile games. Academy Love uh, what? Seven. Seven. Wow. There were six that's... other Academy Loves before this one. Which makes me think it's a game, not a <laughs> yeah. a movie. I'm gonna go. I'm with gonna game. just. Say, I'm gonna say movie. All right. I'm saying game. One, it sounds game. like one of those really obscure, like, visual novels that has such a cult following that it's on seven games, but you've still never heard of it before. <laughs> Somehow they got to seven of these. Exactly. And I really wish it was one of those. Like, sometimes I watch streamers who play really bad visual novel games because it's just hilarious and cringy and stuff. I, I kind of wish that was one of those games. I, there's there's definitely a, a fear game. I have of saying one of these and Jeff's like, oh yeah, I've seen people play this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Number six, Dater's Handbook. Oh. Movie. Oh. Movie. Mm, that's a uh, that's a game. Okay, Chad goes game. I'm talking out of turn, I'm sorry. Uh, I, it doesn't yeah, really Yeah, you're disqualified. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Holden, you're out. You lost. <laughs> I'm sorry to tell you. You're both just, just leave the podcast entirely right now. Uh, there, I'll get a movie. Okay. Holden, what you got? Still movie. I'm thinking it's a movie. All right. Number six, a girl adrift. A girl adrift. Hmm. Hmm. Sorry, you pick good ones because a lot of these. I I was worried. No, because a lot of these it sound like I instantly think movie, but also like, no, there's also be games, and some of them have to be games unless you're really playing. I spent kind of a stupid amount of time looking for these. It's called a girl adrift. Yeah, a girl adrift. Mm. Um, Is that a sequel to a girl apart? 
Is that the name of the movie? What is it? Is it Girl Part? Is that the name of the movie? I think it is. It, wait, what? It Never is mind. now. It is now? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. It probably is. Trademark. <laughs> All right. What y'all got? Jeff said movie. I'm going to go movie. Okay. This is tough because I'm looking back going, well, how many games have I guessed? How many movies have I guessed? And I have three I games and three Daddy. movies. <laughs> so I'm like, well, that doesn't help. <laughs> you um, have a good memory. Yeah. <laughs> I'm writing it down. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm going to go movie on this one, too. All right. It sounds like a better movie nope. tale than a game title. Number eight. F is for falling. Oh. F is for falling. I'd watch that movie. <laughs> <laughs> again, all these... My first reaction is movie, but it's, again, it's like... Some of these have to be games. For the Love Academy one, that one's interesting like game, but uh, uh, I don't know. Ch- if it's a movie, then Chad's the only one that gets a point for Academy Romance Seven. So, you know, just say maybe I make game. <laughs> That's the only one I thought immediately game. Yeah, yeah. Um, F is for falling. Is too clever to be a game title. <laughs> <laughs> but it's shitty enough Unless to be a movie like- title. <laughs> Don't give the game developers enough credit. It's one of those things where I'm like, I feel like I might have seen a commercial about this. It's one of those dumb titles. All right, Jeff. Like TBS. I'll go movie. That's that's a movie. Definitely a movie. Yeah, I can see the 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 cover for this movie, and it's someone who's like looking confused, like shrugging, and then above it just says F is for falling, like, and there's like the person they love behind them or something. It's a corny, crappy cover like that. And or there's like the high school football player looking into the camera with a smile, not even noticing a girl who's like falling with her school books all over the ground and her glasses are crooked. <laughs> oh, I, that's too. I'm giving them too much credit. Like, you're giving them too much credit. It's just them shrugging, being like, "What?" And then that's the cover. <laughs> it's like, where's the fall? All right, number nine. F is for falling. F- that's what it is. That's what they're saying. <laughs> uh, so with a question mark. Yeah. All right, number nine, and this one is my favorite one. Good dick. <laughs> <laughs> I actually know what this is. I'm not going to say it. Oh, no. Is that good? Okay. Dick. Yeah, don't say anything. <laughs> it's That's two funny. words, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. That's got to be a game. That's got to be a mobile game. Okay. Um, I'm going to go with. I'll go, I'll go with game. All right, Holden, what is it? Uh, it's a movie. It was like a Sundance movie or something like that. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> All right. So I got my first instinct. Let me go. I'm just going to go back through and like check who's right. I was just writing a mobile game. Right? Oh, I said movie for the last four of these. Holy crap. Oops. Yeah, you're wrong. That's part, it doesn't matter I think that's part of the reason I said game because I felt like I said movie for a lot of, the, a lot of them. Oh, give me a second. Y'all just vamp for a second because this is taking me a little longer now. That's some quality vamping. Thank you. Thank you. I have a musical theater degree, so I know a thing or two about vamping. Nice. He minored in it as well. <laughs> Majored and minored in musical theater. All right. He's dedicated. Yep. Number one, Love is a Game is, in fact... A mobile game. Yeah. <laughs> I like was hoping that y'all would overthink that. Uh, so Holden's the I don't only even remember one that, what I put. <laughs> Holden's the only one that got a point there. Yeah. Damn it. That's right. Number two. Love money. And I got good rock and roll. I got two already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Holden knows. Holden too. Love, money, rock and roll is a mobile game. Really? Jeff's the, only, Jeff's the only one that got a point there. So Let's go. Holden... <laughs> Two eventually. Eventually, he's gonna have two. Jeff, one. <laughs> the Love Witch. That's a movie. Oh Again, my god! Jeff yeah. is the only one that got that point. What? Jeff, yeah. I missed that one. Yeah. Why well, should have asked? Why well, should have asked? Actually, is it Love Witch like a sandwich, or like Love Witch like a witch who's you know casting spells and stuff? I didn't even ask that. Casting spells. It is the oh. Is the I read love that as witch. a love witch, like a love sandwich. And that's why I'm like, that's definitely a game. No one would make a movie about a love sandwich. No, I should have yeah, should have yeah. asked that qualifying question. I just <laughs> number four, <laughs> Cupid Inc. 
that's a movie. So that's a point for Chad and Holden. Yes. Jeff missed that one. I'm on the board, y'all. Yeah, so two Jeff, two Holden, one Chad. Number five, Academy Romance 7. It is, in fact, a game. Okay. <laughs> Damn it, it. Lo- it was a visual, like, crappy anime visual novel thing, just like you thought. Yeah. So that's <laughs> Jeff and Holden. Jeff and Holden both have three, right? Yep. I think. Yeah. And um, Chad has one. Dater's Handbook. That's a movie. Point yeah. for Jeff and Holden. Uh, <laughs> four, four, one. A Girl Adrift. That's a mobile game. You all got that wrong. What? This game sucks. <laughs> that, a Girl Adrift was like the most serious one of all of these that didn't look like absolute trash from what I remember. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, number eight, F is for Falling, is also a mobile game. It has nothing to do with romance. It's about things falling from the sky and avoiding them. <laughs> that was a good one. That was a good y'all, one. Y'all missed that one too. And then lastly, Good Dick. It's a movie. Holden's the only one that got that. So, Chad, one point. <laughs> I quit. <laughs> Jeff, four points. And Holden wins with five points. Boom. Oh, Thank God for that good dick. <laughs> Thank God for that good <laughs> That's the quote. That's the quote of the episode. <laughs> That's the title, Darby. Yeah. Thank God for that good dick. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I hope that was enjoyable. <laughs> that was good. F is for falling. That was a good one to include. That was a great I, one, yeah. Yeah. I saw that and I was like, oh, this is, <laughs> this is good. All righty. We're going to get into our main topic. And, um, you know, we're already oh, – we're, we're decent time. I, I knew this podcast was probably going to be late. If it gets too late for y'all, speak up for sure. But – I'll just leave without to. letting you know. <laughs> that, that, is, that, is how, that is how you should do it. Chad? Chad, what did you think about Chad? that? Chad? And I'll take Chad? my recording with me. <laughs> um, we're going to talk about generally 2019 and what we're excited, expecting, everything. And our first talking point is about Sony, what E3 will be like without Sony. And I think uh, there was a quote, I guess yesterday, from Sean Layden in a CNET article. And I think it's kind of important to understanding, you know, their what their th- the reason why they pulled out of E3. So Jeff, do you want to? I don't know which part of this to read. This is long. It is very long. But if you want to go ahead and read what you want to read, you put this in there. Sorry. Uh-uh. All right. So Sean was talking to seeing that, and he said. When we decided to take video games out of CES back in 1995 during the PlayStation 1 era, E3 served two constituencies, retailers and journalists. Retailers would come in, you'd see a guy come in, and he'd say, I'm from Sears, and I handle Hot Wheels, Barbie, VHS, and video games. What about you? There was a huge educational component. Then you had journalists who had magazines and lead time jockeying for position on the cover, and there was no internet to speak of. So a trade show at that time of year for this nascent industry was exactly what we needed to do. Now we have an event in February called Destination PlayStation where we bring all retailers and third-party partners to come hear the story for the year. They're making purchasing decisions in February. June now is too late to have a Christmas holiday discussion with retailers. Then he goes on to... He basically goes on to... Here, I'll just skip to... Okay, so a trade show, be- so the trade show became a trade show without a lot of trade activity. The world has changed, but E3 hasn't necessarily changed with it. And with our decision to do fewer, bigger games, are over longer periods of times, we got to a point where June of 2019 was not a time for us to have a new thing to say. And we feel like if we rang the bell, if we ring the bell, people will show up here in force. People have expectations. Oh, they're going to tell us something. We are progressing the conversation about how do we transform E3 to be more relevant. Can E3 transition more into a fan festival of gaming, gaming where we don't gather to dr- sorry, we don't gather there to drop the new bomb? Can it just be a celebration of games and have panels where we bring game developers closer to fans? Now, I know that was a very long quote, but I think it's like E3, I mean, I'm Sony pulling out of E3 was arguably like one of the biggest stories of last year and then going into this year yeah and i think it's interesting to see him like pretty much straight up say part of the reason why 
we're not doing E3 is straight up, we don't have the big announcements that you would expect from E3, which I, I kind of respect them saying that, you know, versus putting on a subpar show, like coming out and saying this is the reason why. Well, yeah, but then it also, it kind of sounds like they're legitimately kind of, it was kind of like this was throwing E3 under the bus kind of and saying it, it sounds like they're wanting to move on past E3 and it makes me wonder if they'll even be back in the same capacity in the future, you know? Yeah. I think that they're still going to do E3 in the future. I think it has more to do with they just don't have much to talk about this year and they got criticized last year for not having enough to talk about. And mm-hmm. since that, I think this year's E3 and to kind of answer the point of like what's E3 going to be like without Sony, um, it's it's going to feel like the E3 2012, just before the next-gen consoles were announced. Developers couldn't talk about a whole lot because they couldn't show off a whole lot quite yet. Maybe this is true for next year as well. We don't really know when next-gen consoles are coming out. It could be 2020, 2020 or 2021. But I don't think it's going to be a huge deal without them there. I think this is smarter for them. They're going to be able to make announcements throughout the year outside of E3 where they're not competing with anybody else. I think this makes a lot of sense. But I don't necessarily agree with the whole... E3 is becoming irrelevant. I, I hear that a lot, but I don't see that. I still love E3. I still vie for it. I want to know what happens during the E3 still. Does anyone here not care about E3? It's my favorite time of the year. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yep. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I still like... I mean, obviously we live in a world where E3 is no longer the be-all, end-all it was for video game news. No, it's like, totally a- changed, yeah. Right. Wait. Well, once upon a time, getting your E3 coverage was your thing for the entire year, and if you mm-hmm. wanted to announce something about your game at any other point, there just really wasn't many avenues to do so on mm-hmm. any scale like this. That's obviously not the same thing at all. But I still feel like when E3 comes around, there are it's not for small titles, but for these big titles, that is where you get the most traction. That is where you see. CNN in weird places like that that you never see talk about games once coming out and precisely, I out, precisely right, and they yeah. start talking about that. I feel like that stuff still happens, and and that I that's where I agree with you. It's I'm fine with I'm not like completely enraged about Sony skipping an E3, no, but no, I no. don't completely buy that like they don't need it at all. You know? Yeah. I think also it seemed weird to me. I have to reread the quote again, but it seemed weird to me to say it's losing its relevancy. We want an opportunity to connect with our fans. Fans have been showing up to E3 for the first time the past few years. That's your opportunity to connect with the fans. Like, why would you not take that opportunity? Um, of course, this year 2019, they don't have much to talk about. I mean, that's I'm, I'm, I totally get. But the whole relevancy thing doesn't make sense when you're saying we need another. Op- we want opportunities to reach out to our fans. E3 has been creating that opportunity because of the, the concerns that he mentioned with it being a trade show. Doesn't that part's not relevant anymore? But that doesn't mean that the, the the kind of the consumer uh, fan experience part of it can't be. And then why wouldn't you have big reveals at, at an event like that? Comic Con has big reveals at it. I just I don't really get that approach. And it also seems a little strange for him <laughs> to be saying we want more opportunities to engage with our fans and have a fan celebration coming right off the heels of canceling PSX, which is their event. Right. Yeah. That is a yeah. fan celebration. <laughs> That's yeah. the, the thing you want that you canceled two months ago. Right. That's what, it's, it's, it's a weird quote to me. I mean, it's just, it, it's almost like he went further than I feel like he needed to. He could have just yeah. stopped at the, we're not at E3 this year because we're working on The Last of Us and Ghost of Tsushima mm-hmm. and all of these. And when they we announce them or when we reveal more about them, you're going to lose your mind just like you would have any other time. And, you know, mm-hmm. I think that would have been fine to just leave it there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what this makes and, me super hyped for? What's that? I, looking at 2019 now, whatever they decide to attend, whether it is a, a PAX or a Paris Games Week or whatever it is, you know they're going to show up with something to talk about and you know it's going to be big because they're dropping out of E3, they canceled PSX because they don't have anything to say. So whenever they do show up, there's going to be some hype stuff to, to really get excited about. There's something in March. Isn't there something in March GDC's happening? In March. 
Is that is mm-hmm. that the destination? Pl- I mean, the destination. Yeah, what's the destination place? And when is that? That is just a solely retail thing. Like journalists okay. aren't even allowed. They're usually, yeah. I mean, it could be different this year because they're not at E three. Okay. But I actually just learned about that from Kind of Funny Games Daily for the first time. I'd never heard of it. Same, same. But apparently, it's something <laughs> yeah. that's been going on for years, and it's just retailers to go in and figure out how much of this do I buy for the holiday season, all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Right, and I mean that could potentially become something else, or they might have another appearance or you know like a few years ago they went pretty hard at tokyo game show or um uh paris games paris games week and then this last year they weren't there at all they could come harder at one of those shows because i do know that a lot of these big developers have said that e3 the price of attending e3 is starting to be so much to where it's not as worth it you know Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah but i'm not sure well, interestingly, PlayStation Destination sounds like a trade show, which is what he's saying E3 is not anymore. So maybe there will be some announcements there. Long shot, but... No, it's... No, I, I know. Destination yeah. PlayStation is not a trade show, and it's something that has been going on forever. Yeah. I feel like... It, How is it not a trade show? A, it's, a, it's a place you're going to to talk to retailers to figure out what you're going to be trading monetarily in the coming year. Well, I mean, year. like, not... Not in the in the sense that there will be journalists and things like that. There. Okay, okay. It's not a public facing trade yeah, show right. like E3 was. I feel like it's going to be a big thing where the announcements like Sony themselves will be pumping up more, and just like kind of funny people we follow who are more in the know yeah. would be saying, "Hey, get hyped." But it's also just the the I don't I don't know I like maybe it's just me holding on to the way the hype cycle that I am used to in video games and the hype cycle that I like, but. When he talks about like turning E3 into just more of a fan celebration, I just always think like the sheer amount of like Comic Cons we already have all over the place, PAXs everywhere, PSX, all this stuff. E3 has always been something different and something like I'm people outside are a lot more interested in. You know, you know, you go there and you'll see announcements. Mm -hmm. And I mean, like, I just feel like if E3 completely goes the Comic Con route, it'll just become, I don't know. I don't think it'd become irrelevant if the Comic Con route. It's it's kind of like it wouldn't. It wouldn't. it'd be like it, it's like when Apple got into smartphones. They're Apple. They can get into smartphones because they're Apple and they can do that. Right. And now they're right. one of the biggest smartphone manufacturers ever. E three decides to get into the you know Comic Con like deal. They're now one of the biggest cons. Yeah. So yeah. it'll it'll work out. Yeah, that's probably true. I mean, what do you think from Microsoft's side? If you're Microsoft, are you just calling every third party you know <laughs> that would have gone to that PlayStation I mean, stage? Depending, the third party is probably calling <laughs> them. Third party is probably calling them. Though, to be fair, um, if you look at like last year and who had what games, Sony didn't have too many third party games. Just like it was Control and Neo. <laughs> yeah, it was Resident Evil, like Neo and um, Justin Roiland's VR game, and maybe like one other game. Kingdom Hearts was at both, so I think that was about it as far as ones that weren't Sony games. So I don't think it's going to be that much different. Like it just we'll just lack Sony games as far as that, and yeah, we'll, we'll get a couple more third third party games at Microsoft. The quote from Phil yeah. Spencer on E3 2019 is, "It'll be as big as it's ever been," which is not give a lot of hope it's going to be massive they're basically lowering expectations it's not going to be bigger than last year it'll be the same it'll be cool it'll be fun yeah I'm nothing, nothing that's bad I, i'm fine <laughs> yeah. yeah last year was a great e3 but i don't think they're planning on well sony's not here we're gonna you know blow the doors off and yeah get literally everyone well yeah. they're gonna they're probably gonna call up that pan flute guy and say hey <laughs> can you um... <laughs> <laughs> musical guests, more musical you, yeah. guests. No, I think it'd be. I, I I expect to see something of like a playful um, jabbing at each other, just like Sony playfully jabbed at Microsoft at the whole sharing a game, just handing it over. I think they'll there'll be stuff like that, it all in good fun. But I don't really know what to expect from Microsoft, honestly. None of their studios are going to be ready to talk about games yet. Um, yeah, which is uh, the problem. Yeah. So I, again, like I think this is going to be a a more subtle year. Because it's pre next gen. Yeah, I think for Microsoft it's gonna be like last year, maybe with a little more focus on third parties, just yeah, mainly third party mm-hmm. games like, hey, maybe we'll finally get Rocksteady's game. Mm-hmm. Or that Avengers yeah. game we've been hearing about. I still I expect <laughs> Microsoft to be the awesome show third like awesome E three show full of games that I'm gonna play on my PlayStation again. Slash mm-hmm. PC. Because I think that <laughs> Xbox is <laughs> Xbox it's is totally just true. Not, 
I mean, Xbox is just not ready. I mean, like, I love these announcements. I love that they have Ninja Theory, that they have Compulsion Games, and apparently uh, Playground Studios might be working on a Fable game, which is one of my favorite game series of all time. So I'm very excited about all those things. It's just we're, we're not ready to see the fruits of that yet. Yeah. They're, we'll right. see some big third-party announcements. Like, if I were CD Projekt Red, I'd be announcing Cyberpunk's release date at microsoft's e3 they already have the partnership with them for last e3 Mm -hmm. that'll probably happen again i think we'll see stuff like that yeah lots of third parties yeah i think microsoft's just that like where nintendo was before the switch came out in the last year of the wii u where it's like hey we're gearing up for the next console so we don't have that much at the moment Mm -hmm. kind of that kind of thing yeah so it's kind of understandable they don't go crazy with their own um first party games but yeah we'll see expect them at least one or two big things yeah all right, well, um, if that's all the E3 taught me, we can just go some rapid fire through some of our other talking points. Um, you guys want to hear real quick what a destination PlayStation actually entails? Yes, I really do. <laughs> go for it. I it's going to be underwhelming. <laughs> I found the 2013 agenda for the destination PlayStation Ooh, of that year. Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of things on here, so I'll cherry pick some. So like, This is also a next-gen year, so this should be one of the most exciting. Yeah. 8 a.m., Hospitality desk opens. Oh, yeah. Hell yes. Until 8.45, breakfast. 9 to 10.30, general session for all attendees. 10.30 to 5, individual retailers scheduled appointments with SCEA and third-party companies. Individual appointments, Darby. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Guys, I'm getting so pumped. (laughs) They've also got lunch, cocktails, dinner, and drinks in the grand ballroom. And it continues like that that for three days. (laughs) There's that one GameStop executive in the corner who got way too drunk off the cocktail. <laughs> <No. laughs> but on the third day, listen to this. This is where they change it up. On the third day, 11.30 a.m., shuttles leave for golf course. <laughs> 11.45. Wait, are you saying there's going to be a served. next-gen golf game coming on PS5? <laughs> I think that's what oh, that no. means. I think yeah. that's or what PS4 that means. in that case. In that time. 12.45 p.m., arrive at golf course staging area. 1 p.m., golf tournament tea time. Shuttles leave for the golf course and return to the hotel at the end of the day. I think so, yeah, they should bring is, the fans along with it. They can go a, golf with Sean Layden. So, It'd be so great. It so, it sounds like golf with shoe. So it sounds like there was only two things of actually productive meeting, and the rest of it was eating, drinking, and playing golf. Yeah. yeah. The golf is networking. <laughs> what do you think that's, that's is? That's important, okay? It's important <laughs> stuff. Because the, the, they didn't the network program. during the breakfast or the meetings where they were networking or the individual meetings where they were networking. <laughs> they had to have the golf. That You're was not important. allowed to network unless it's over golf. Exactly. Or oh, they're just trying to see two. how good their golf games are. How accurate are their golf games? It's it's very important <laughs> to them. I mean, it's on an, day it's, two, guys. They've also scheduled in five and a half hours of free time. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's a lot of free time. <laughs> yeah. You guys, might as well just not have had a second day. Like second day is <laughs> free time. Day three is golf. <laughs> <laughs> So we have like, one, like we have two hours for meetings, and the rest of it is just. Although this is do whatever you want. This has nothing to do with it, but the I just thought of. Did you guys watch Arrested Development? Yes. Yep. Maybe's report card from school. I don't know why. This just reminds me. Like the schedule just reminds me of her report card from school. It's just like <laughs> it's just for childish. It's. It's very handholdy. Like all right, we're gonna go to free play now. <laughs> Now, when you swing, remember, look at the ball. Just keep looking. Oh, you're going to miss it. <laughs> aim for Knack. He's down there at the... <laughs> he's down there on the green. Aim for him. But they miss Knack every time. They just can't yeah, get it. Yeah. No matter how many can't times they swing. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. Uh, let's move very quickly because it's getting late. It's late here. At least on the East Coast, it's late here. It's 848 right now here. Yeah. Yeah, fuck you. That'd be nice. (laughs) I could keep going, but I I, I want Holden to get some sleep. (laughs) All right. um, I don't know how much you guys care about this, but who do you think the Smash Bros. DLCs will be? Do you have any theories? Mm -hmm. DLC characters. I think the leaks are are pretty accurate as to what we're going to get. Even Doom Guy? (laughs) Uh, Even Doom Guy. I actually wrote Doom Guy down as one of my predicted characters, I think. I'm looking for it right now in my notes. Yeah, I think we're getting Doom Guy. We're definitely gonna get Steve from Minecraft. Um, who else? Oh, yeah, Edric. Uh, Ninja Gaiden. 
uh, Ryu. Yeah, oh, we'll definitely was, get him. And Edric from Dragon Quest was one yep. of them. In the, I don't know, but that was just because the data mining. Edric's the only one I'm confident in. Um, the other ones, I'm like, I'm not completely buying that. 100 buying that. Like all those characters alone are kind of probable, I think. But all together, I don't know if I buy like the source of the leak necessarily. Yeah, yeah. I would be a little surprised if there's not a single Nintendo first party character in any of these five DLC characters, mm-hmm. which is what this leak is basically saying. I mean, it's possible. Yeah, there's got to be something from Xbox in it. Something from Xbox is going to be in Banjo. So, uh, dang it! <laughs> I just, yeah, I really least, wonder. I really just wonder if if that is us just hyping it up and hoping it to happen, or if it's I think something so. That really I, think, I think Steve from Minecraft has more recognition nowadays with people than Banjo does. Oh no, you are hundred percent so, right. I just love Banjo, <laughs> but Smash does not always go for that because Duck Hunt's in here, Mister Game and Watches in here. I mean, you're right. They don't. It, they don't the always robot. go for the hottest thing, you know. Sakurai, I think, can does what he wants sometimes. You know? Yeah, but, but this remember, is Nintendo picking Nintendo the characters. Nintendo chose these, yeah. not Sakurai. Yeah, Nintendo yeah, chose but, them. Um, but th- uh, but even even then, Nintendo is obviously not just going for the easy thing because like Joker Persona Five is not even on the Switch. Well, that's so <laughs> yeah. they they've said Joker is a trend, and I actually think they said that because they're only going to let characters that are on the Switch who have a Switch game. And I'm convinced that Persona 5 S is going to be the Switch version of that game. So, like, Doom would make sense because Doom he's Doom Eternal is coming to Switch. Dragon yeah, Quest would make yeah. sense because that's coming to Switch. Minecraft Steve because he's already on Switch. Uh, Ryu, mm-hmm. that's the one that's strange because Ninja Gaiden's not on Switch. But Well, along with that rumor, I think I think the the source said that Ninja or, um, a Ninja Gaiden game is coming to Switch this mm-hmm. year. So, so we'll see. We that's of course if the whole rumors is accurate. Yes, which they always are, every time. All, always, one hundred percent. If I'm we talk about that, it, it's. Fact. I, I'm still, I'm still waiting for Gino. I got God. I would do that. anything for Gino. Isn't Gino already a spirit though? <laughs> yeah, he's a spirit. Yeah. I don't think spirits mean anything as far as getting in. Like, who knows, Rayman could get in because he's also a spirit. I think it's his trophies are the. Yeah, more but there's no Joker thing. spirit. Yeah. <laughs> is he true? I mean, I'm hoping for Banjo simply so I simply so Jeff I can see Jeff happier than I've ever seen because I have <laughs> Final Fantasy 7 is my favorite game of all time and we somehow got Cloud in this game and now we have Joker I mean, I, I, I'm, I mean I'm just good. fun fact when Cloud was announced for Smash it was actually on Darby's birthday his favorite character was announced for Smash on his birthday <laughs> Reggie did it for me I believe it <laughs> Um, all right, let's go through some of these other ones. We kind of already talked about Battle Royale. Do you guys think that this entire year, like the 2019 is going to end and Battle Royale is still going to be as popular as it is or close to it or more? It'll be more popular. 100%. More. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's not going away. No, it's not. Uh, especially since in comparison to some other gaming trends, this has become a genre. It's not just one game doing this or two games mm-hmm. doing this. It's, you know, mm-hmm. and it's still a genre that people can still do a lot with if they want to. Absolutely. I think it's also like, it's, it's attracted a new crowd of people. Like there, there are hardcore gamers that play a lot of different stuff and know things like Metro is coming out. And then there are gamers that play Madden and Call of Duty. And now I think there's a new pool of gamers that just play Fortnite and Apex Legends. Mm-hmm. And I think that's just going to, it's going to continue to grow that pool. Absolutely. Yep. And there's people like my little cousin that I literally the last like two months, I have never seen him not wearing the exact same Fortnite jacket. And um, I can't <laughs> even have a conversation with him because he just does Fortnite dances. <laughs> back at me. And, yeah. <laughs> There is a floss dance in Lego and uh, the Lego Movie Two, by the way. So nice. <laughs> Are they gonna get yep. sued? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> um, will we hear about slash get any next gen hardware in 2019? I know Chad, you 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 are a firm believer. I think we're gonna see all of it. I think you're <laughs> so wrong. I think we're gonna see all of it. Microsoft <laughs> already said they're working on something last E3. And I think we're going to see their hardware this E3. And I don't think Sony can afford to let them get that much of a head start. So I think Sony's going to show us something big this year, too. So I think we're getting all of it, including a Switch, some kind of redesign or slimmed down or something like that, too. Yeah, I can see the Switch redesign just 
some way it just happened. I don't know what exactly it'd be. I'm not completely sold on us getting all the next gen hardware, just probably because I feel like we'd be hearing about it by now. Yeah, and then, like if I'm Sony at. was doing it, for instance, they would be at E3 probably. Exactly. Show exactly. something. I think Xbox. We'll, so I think well. we. Xbox, who knows at this point? They could do it. They're not going to. They're not going to either because the studios aren't ready. They don't have next yeah, gen games that's to true just show well. off yet. We, um, I mean, we, I, oh, go ahead. No, I just, I just don't think this is this is the year for it at all. The the consoles haven't declined in sales enough to make it worthwhile. I don't think, and I think we would have heard something by now. I mean, Sony announced the PS4 in February. They're yeah, not going to announce it at PlayStation Destination. They're certainly not going to announce it close to E3, but not at E3. They're going to wait mm-hmm. a little while after if they're going to do it at that point. And then they're not going to announce the PS5 after E3 for 2019 release. And I certainly don't think they're going to announce the PS5 before the holiday and not release it before that holiday. Yeah. And I think the don't same thing for words. Xbox. I just, unless you've been to the future, Chad. <laughs> you don't know I have it. I'm Can't pretty. I'm pretty confident that, that you have it. I think well, this might be the thing that Chad and I three hours disagree ago on the you most. Are. And it's just there now. I went back in time. <laughs> Boom. I think he got you, man. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I, science. I think that you don't know how time zones work. But yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I would be shocked if we don't hear from one of them. Like, I'm expecting more Xbox than Sony just because... I, I, I don't know. They're, 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 with the whole streaming thing, I think their box is going to be a little different in general. But I would be surprised if we don't hear about next gen hardware this year i would be it, even more shocked if we actually got it this year though like yeah. i really i agree that i don't think we're there yet yeah to and go sony really has no reason to go for it because no of course not it's still selling so yeah. much i think also um i think people with, with microsoft say well they said it last year therefore they're going to talk about it again this year just because with the scorpio they said hey scorpio then the next year they release a scorpio the difference is that Scorpio was a mid-generational thing, so it wasn't really going to interfere with the sales of the current gen too much because there wasn't really a promise of like new games. You're not really going to be missing out. You can still get the same content. But with this also, they announce all these studios they're buying. And I think they wanted to link those messages together to say, hey, look, we're buying all these studios. At the same time they're talking about these new, this new consoles, it's because th- those two things are related. And I think they needed to make sure that people had an expectation that those new studios are not making Xbox One games don't anticipate those games to be an Xbox One. And I think the major way to do that is to say, hey, we're making consoles. Which, because it's not really much of a statement anyway, because of course they're making consoles. Sony's making PS5. Nintendo's making the Switch successor, even though they say they're not. They're, uh, their engineers are doing something. Mm-hmm. So they're, they had to say it to, to, to make sure the messaging was clear. I agree 100%. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> Chad will be able to say we're all wrong. and <laughs> That's right. Oh, y'all That's motherfuckers not. wrong. <laughs> Um, do you guys think The Last of Us Part 2 is coming this year? Yes. I guess, I guess we can extend this. Um, I guess what Sony first party thinks you think will actually come this year, besides like Days Gone and that kind of stuff. Because yeah. all of them, like Last of Us, Dreams, Ghost of Tsushima, Death, uh, Death Stranding. Stranding, are kind of all like up in the air as far as when they come out. Yeah. I you can see th- any of those coming this year. So for- I can see none of them. For our official predictions on the podcast, I said that the only one coming out this year is Last of Us Part Two, but I'm second guessing that now because of all the talk of Death Stranding, all the times people have said just since the beginning of this year, we've played several hours of Death Stranding at this point. So mm. it, it, that could doesn't necessarily mean it's coming out in 2019, but there's so much discussion of it that if we don't have it coming out this year, we're getting a release date for it this year, I think. I mean, meaning like it could be dated for 2020 this year. But I, there's a chance it could come out this year, I think. I'm thinking, quite honestly, I'm thinking Death Stranding Summer, Last of Us Part Two, October. Summer. You think that wow. soon? Crazy. Wow. Yeah. Because I think they could just shadow, not shadow drop it, but like say like, oh, guys, it's coming out in just a few months, and then just drop the mic. They could do that with Death Stranding. All right, big prediction. At this year's Game Awards, we're all going to be sucked into the screen <laughs> and we're going to be in, in, in Death Stranding. We, we've, our life has been Death Stranding this whole time. And then it turns out Death Stranding was made in dreams. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but really I mean, funny. Just re- real talk, as far as all these games go, the only one I feel, I, can feel conf- I feel confident saying will come out this year is dreams because they just did the beta. It's, everything seemed to have gone well. I feel like it's at least coming out some point this year, even if it's the late in the year. 
I, and I feel like Ghost of Tsushima is kind of a wild card <laughs> because um, uh, Sucker Punch, it's been a long time since uh, Second 2014. Sun. 2014. <clears throat> Who knows how long of that they were working on this, but it could have been a while. So, I mean, like I that's a game that could surprise us come this year, but it could also not. I'm not yeah. sure. Mm-hmm. Um, and, what game? Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, go, go for it. You're fine. I'm. It was not important. No. Go ahead. Uh, okay. You sure? Yeah, hundred percent sure. It was going to be a um, really corny joke. Just keep going. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like I missed out on a corny joke. <laughs> uh, what game you are y'all most most excited for in 2019? Sekiro. Uh, fair, fair. You big um FromSoft guy? Uh, I don't know if I'm big, but I like them a lot. Yeah. Fair. <laughs> yeah. Fair. I beat Demon Souls and Bloodborne, loved them. I got almost all the way through Dark Souls three and loved it. So you're you're a pro gamer, basically. You're, yeah, you're, yeah. Basically, I'm the best in the world. So. You're the best of us. <laughs> Except you yeah, didn't even beat fine. Dark Souls three, so you can't even no, can't say that. Yeah, can't but I that. just got all the way through a song without no fail mode on Beat Saber Expert Plus. Mode oh yeah, last holy night, crap, so. uh, that's impressive. Jeff, oh, he can nice. play Expert like with Expert me, Plus. He said when me and Jeff Expert try Plus Expert without just, no fail on. It's just a freaking massacre. I, yeah. We can't even get like halfway through a song. Like I, I can do hard on every song now, and I feel accomplished. Like I felt like that was something I achieved, but I guess not. No, nope. <laughs> they were so good. It's so good. <laughs> it's so good. It's just, it's amazing. <laughs> I'm not even a rhythm game guy. It's just really good. Also, they are very soon launching Soundtrack Volume 2 for that game. So a bunch of new songs are going to be dropping. It's oh, going to yeah, be dope. That. Yep. Oh, that League I'm song in. is like so good. The song yeah. from League that's, of Legends. That's is my so favorite catchy. song. That's the one that I got on Expert Plus without failing. I nice. love that song. I, I can't really explain why. It's just, I mean, it's not usually the type of music I listen to, but it's just, I don't know. Something about fun. being in Beat Saber mm-hmm. doing this so fun. Yeah. And, and the movements that you're doing while you're on uh can we down 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 and just like swinging your arms up and down or in yep. a circle you, or whatever it's you so feel weird. like a badass you don't look like a badass but you <laughs> no, feel like it's all about the feel <laughs> you don't see That's yourself right. <laughs> um what about you holden what's your most anticipated game um i don't know if i like it most but sekiro is absolutely up there for me chad introduced me to bloodborne so thank you chad for that because that game yeah, is, is is unbelievably good um you also got me to the soulsborne genre as well so Sekiro, absolutely. Um, I'm excited for Luigi's Mansion 3. Nice. Very excited for that one. Uh, Metro Exodus, I'm excited for that game. I really liked, really, really liked 2033 and Last Light a lot. So I'm, I'm very curious what a next-gen version of it, how much they kind of repolish because uh, that that series. Because uh, Chad played, he, Chad can probably criticize it more than I can because he that hated it. That game's a butthole. It. <laughs> but uh, there are definitely some flaws in, in some polishing that need to be done in terms of like voice acting and uh, yeah, just storytelling, I'd say. So I'm curious at how they improve those parts of it. But I'm super pumped. It looks amazing. Um, and outside of that, I, I'm pretty sure Doom Eternal is coming out this year. There's not an official release date on that, but I'm pretty sure it's this year. I so, I'd, so. I'd, I'd put that on there as well. Um, and then... Even though I'm not like a huge Pokemon fan, I like Pokemon quite a bit, but I'm like a oh, huge yeah. fan. I'm really excited for that Pokemon game. I'm really, Same. really curious what they do because it's not just going to be a standard Pokemon game. That's basically well, what Let's Go Eevee and Let's Go Pikachu was, minus the catching stuff. I think they're going to do something really unique, and I'm very curious yeah. what that is. Well, we might find out soon because based off precedent, we might we should find out potentially in the next like two weeks. Yeah, there's a Pokemon event with like a lot of treehouse, um, Nintendo treehouse yeah. events scheduled around that time. So I think that's going to happen for sure. I think we would at least get the title pretty soon. Yeah, because and the Sun titles... and Moon, oh yeah, on Sun and Moon was officially revealed in February as well. The year yeah. it came out. So the new new generation of Pokemon games are generally re- the titles are released in like January, February, and yeah. then. The spinoffs like Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon, are usually May. So we'll see this mm-hmm. this month. I'm very sure of that. Yeah, I'm excited to see. Yeah, uh, the Let's Go games uh, did not excite me. <laughs> there's like a there's a video <laughs> on their channel. It's just like reactions to the Let's Go Eevee and po- Pikachu trailer or something. And it's just 30 solid minutes of Jeff ranting, and I'm just sitting there like asking, like trying to be benefit of the doubt. I'm like, but but what about this? And then just more fire from Jeff. <laughs> 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 but i understand this is a game series he loves a lot and it, it was kind of a bummer that the first switch the first like console the, the first like mainline console pokemon game is 
takes everything I did not want a Pokemon game and elevates, make those the most important parts. Yeah, but it's a spinoff. I think this is why they call it a spinoff, though. Just to like, yeah. let people I mean, like you know. They also hey call guys, it a mainline covered, game. That's what right the now. director said. That's, I, kept, I keep telling Jeff that it's like, this game's not for you, but the one <laughs> next year is going to be. That's the one for yeah. you. That's that's the one they're making we'll, for we'll you. We'll see. So. Yeah. As far as me, I'll just say real quick. I guess the one I was looking forward to the most for years is already out. I played at Kingdom Hearts 3. So everything else is meaningless. Yeah. Life is but meaningless. I'm really excited Life for... is meaningless. Yep. Yeah, End much. it now. But Fire Emblem 3 Houses, I'm very excited about. I know Darby is too. And hey. we'll see if we if I still feel that after tomorrow. We'll have to see. Yeah, that, those opinions could be unfounded yeah. starting tomorrow. But... And Pokemon, um, I'm looking forward to Digimon Survive. We don't know much about it, but... I love Digimon, and if they nail the gameplay and everything right, and the visual novel stuff right, it could be a game I just love. See, mm-hmm. Jeff likes Digimon and Pokemon. He bridges the gap. He's, yep. <laughs> Dude, I loved Digimon as a kid, but I've never played a good Digimon game. There are there are a couple. I mean, there was one on DS that I guess fine for what they were. Cyber Slew for the PS that's on the PS4 and stuff is a very solid game. Good to um, know. Well, my my number one is definitely Ori and the Will of, Wh- Will of the Wisps. That's a hard title. <laughs> Ori and the Will, and the Will of, of the Wisps. wisps. Um, Ori and the Blind Forest was just like an awesome game. I don't even play that many Metroidvanias, and I had like or you know that kind of two D platformer with you know that kind of vibe. I don't play too many of them, and I had not played one in years. But I just went to that game because the art style and the music was just phenomenal and. That, I mean, that game is just so damn good. There's just not a wasted moment in it. It's, like, not that long, but it's, I don't know, it's just a really, 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 really well-polished game. And I'm super, super excited to see that, you know, progress more. And I imagine they're going to have, like, a higher budget. They have Microsoft backing them. Yeah. It looks like an awesome game. Can and, I add? Um, yeah. Yeah. Oh. If you're doing more games, sorry, I'll wait. You're done. No, you go, you go ahead. Just wanted to add two really quickly. Rage 2. Forgot Rage 2. Nice. Yeah, I'm surprisingly interested. I'm very interested. It's definitely not like a blind purchase, but I am more interested in Rage 2 than I thought I would be, you know. Because I, I I'm interested don't in Rage 2 because Rage 2. I love Borderlands, so Rage 2 is Borderlands 3, and that's why I'm going to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> fair. Fair, yeah. That's um, very fair. The Outer Worlds, and then Chad, I'm going to call you out here. You're also yeah. excited for the Surge 2. Oh, hell yeah, Surge 2. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Have you guys ever played the Surge? No. No. Oh, it's Dark Souls, but sci fi. It's mm. so fucking cool. I feel like I've heard of it. I know I've heard of it. I'm trying to. If you've ever watched the Netflix series Dark, they're playing it in that TV series, although they're playing a build that doesn't exist because that build they're playing is multiplayer, but this one doesn't have it. But it's super cool. You guys should absolutely play it. Oh, yeah. Look into it. Yeah. I need to get to Bloodborne first. That's... <laughs> Definitely play, yeah, Bloodborne play Bloodborne first. Bloodborne. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. But what you were saying, Holden, yeah, Outer Worlds looks very interesting and I'm excited to see more of that. That's absolutely one of mine. The, the fact that you're like, yeah, this is the Fallout New Vegas people and they can kind of mm-hmm. just go off the rails. They're not drowned. They're not, you know, they're not roped in by an existing IP. They can kind of just do whatever the hell they want. And... Mm-hmm. I'm actually excited by the fact that they said it's a more linear game. Yeah. Same here. I got very excited about that, yeah. too. Yeah. I, I'm like a tight experience that I can just realistically play <laughs> an experience and it's not over. Maybe have good replay value if you want to try yeah. it again and see what else can be different. And that trail that was just a kick-ass trailer. I mean, like... Oh, great trailer. I don't know. Yeah. It was awesome. I just can't wait to try the dumb dialogue. That sounds hysterical. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I love in, in there, they're like, yeah, you know, you know, you didn't have to kill that guy. <laughs> 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 you monster. It's like, <laughs> um, But that and Fire Emblem, like Jeff said, w- me and Jeff are both big Fire Emblem guys. And this, this one just looks like it's doing a lot of kind of maybe subtle but cool changes. Like being able to walk around on the overworld in some places and seeing like your full army on this battlefield. It just looks kind of more of a grand focus. Yeah, I swear they show off a bunch of waifus tomorrow. That will kill it. If there's just anime boobs <laughs> all kill some the hype. place, that will kill a little bit. Of the <laughs> and they are known to do that in that series, unfortunately. <laughs> Thanks, Fire Emblem Heroes. <laughs> well, um, I think we can pretty much. I think we can probably end it there. The rest of this, I think we all think the Switch is going to be successful. 
Yeah. I, th- I think we've talked about Final it year of the yeah. Switch. They're going to discontinue it. It's yep. done. It's done. It's done. And the Tin I Doom, mean, guys. If you have anything to say about the Epic Game Store, but I think that's a wait and see type deal, and that could be a whole nother podcast. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely. a whole. I'm sure, we all talked about there. that enough. <laughs> uh, it's a whole nother thing. Well, thank you guys so much for joining. I'm sorry that it went a little bit long, but I thought no this worries. was an awesome discussion. We really appreciate it. Had a lot of fun. Absolutely. Yeah, it was fun. All right. Well, everyone should definitely check out Respawn Aim Fire. Go to the kind of funny up and comer. Suggest them, and then you know maybe suggest us too. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> do it. There's just two spots. It. There's two spots. Let's just go. All right. Well, thank you guys so much. Um, we'll be doing the Nintendo Direct tomorrow or today when you're hearing the other guests. You know, you know it. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bye. All right. Bye. Bye. bye.